Welcome to Thought Cops bonus episode. That's right, guys. We got something a little bit different for you this week. We have a free preview episode of our Patreon show, Fire Bros. Uh, Grant and I were joined by Josh, aka Sleep Science, as well as Nico on this episode to discuss the biggest sleeper hit movie of the year, the Super Mario Brothers movie. Uh, This is one of my favorite episodes that we've ever done over at uh, Fire Bros, and uh, we've been doing them for years, so there's a whole lot more to check out. We just did Oppenheimer. We just did Barbie. little sneak peek for you. We're also going to be reviewing the One Piece Netflix show. So pay attention for that. And if you like this episode, head on over to patreon.com slash thought cops. It's only two bucks a month. And you know what? It really helps us out and it makes us feel pretty good too. So without further ado, please enjoy this free episode of Fire Bros, where we review the Super Mario Brothers movie. Patreon.com slash thought cops. Wait, hold on. Can I can I do the intro real quick? Yeah, do it. This time. All right. <sighs> Mushroom Kingdom, here, here we, we come. come. Welcome to Fire Bros. It's a very special episode. We're reviewing a second piece of video game related media adaptation that is about mushrooms. That's right, folks. This week, we're talking about The Last of Us Part 2. Just kidding around. We're talking about the Super Mario Brothers movie, which we all saw together last night as of this recording i'm joined of course with uh fire deputy grant i'm not a fucking deputy what the fuck, <laughs> what the fuck i'm is the one Lord of, of the show demoted <laughs> i'm a bro the a deputy is like oh, someone right, you right. deputize for the like when you need extra help you know okay josh you're you're taking his you're taking both of our He's, places actually. josh is a volunteer firefighter uh because he's volunteering because we don't pay him for these um when we reach a goal of five hundred dollars a month on Patreon, uh, maybe we'll pay Josh. But yeah, tell your after, friends. After doing my taxes, uh, we're running a very thin budget. I've realized. <laughs> yeah, yeah. disgust. I have not asked for any kind of payment. Just for the record, <laughs> nor also, shall you. While, I want to no. uh, get this out of the way. Thank you so 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 very much to Shruggernaut. Yeah, who donated yeah. on Patreon for all oh, of yeah. us to see the movie together. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, that was <coughs> truly amazing. Thank you, Shruggernaut. Thank you for telling on me to Elon Musk and all that great stuff you do. <laughs> yeah. So, oh yeah. Also, yeah. If you, if you didn't recognize that laughter, that was. Uh, we're also joined by Nico today. How are you, Nico? I'm good. Just my tummy no. hurts, but I'm being very brave about it. So. Very nice. Did Did you get like food poisoning from the Alamo Draft House? <laughs> no, that was just you. I just ate popcorn. Oh, okay. <laughs> They kept fucking up my boyfriend's order. Like, like literally, oh, he didn't really? get his his drink until like Peach got kidnapped, and he's like, "Where's my diet?" Whoa, oh my spoilers! <laughs> Shut up! This, you know, you know, it's that just he ordered like before the movie started. Yes, yes, we both God ordered, before, and, and I didn't get, I got my popcorn like halfway through, and then he was like, "Where's my diet, Doctor Pepper?" <laughs> oh my yeah, God! That's so annoying. Guys, parched. Yeah. So yeah, we did. All, we saw this all together at the Alamo Draft House, which I had never been to before. Me I think maybe anymore. only Josh. I've it's been like, there a couple times. It's newish, right? Oh, you have yeah. at, at that location. Yeah, there's only one in Chicago, and it's uh, new, right? Didn't they just put it there? Yeah, in February. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah, I liked it. It was cool. I don't think I would go there on a regular basis, but it's a very, very cool. I wouldn't uh, get space. food from there again. Ordering a like eating a hamburger and having to like sit in a reclining chair, but like lean forward so like you're not like <laughs> dropping food on yourself, but also that the food like you know upset my stomach afterwards. Like was not a great 
like you know. Yeah, I haven't had that experience yet. I've gotten food a few times there, and I luckily have. I just run wouldn't do. That. I'd, I'd rather uh, just do like an easy unlucky. like. I, I also think it's just like I just you know I don't want to be like eating a a whole ass meal you know which I was like ooh cool I can I eat a whole ass eat. meal yeah I know but it was just like the the uh, the novelty of it you know yeah I think the fact that we so we went as a group of twelve people yes and yeah. so it felt it felt like an outing so it felt like yeah. appropriate to get a meal. I even, yeah. Yeah, I, wanna... I even had my friends from college that were in town. I'm like, hey, come with us. But I kind of fucked up like the seating thing. So they weren't seated oh. by us. So I was like, oops, sorry, guys. Oh, oh weren't they? Oh, yeah. I think they were like further down. But I want to oh, say like, whatever. well, when I when I walked into the movie theater, it was like I, I instantly was like, I'm going to have a good time. All you guys were sitting there. I turn around on the big screen. They're playing all these like retro Japanese Mario commercials that was instead of almost movie trailers. my favorite part of the movie going experience was like watching all the retro commercials because it's one of those things where like I feel like I've seen a lot of those commercials on just YouTube or whatever before you're scrolling TikTok or whatever and an old yeah. commercial pops up. But like. The fact that they were doing them back to back to back to back, and it's just like there's 40 years worth of like um, Mario uh, Mario commercials that they've been making, and they're also like weird and like otherworldly and shit like that was just like you know, it really just helped. Like it was just like it really felt like an elevated experience, like seeing it in this like theater, which was like uh, there was like maybe one or two other kids in the theater. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. yeah I, they they, nobody was talking. Shows. They do like uh, curated pre-shows for basically every movie. That's like that. really cool. Show really. Yeah, I like that, that said, a lot. Like this one was good. I've been to some where they've shown some stuff before the movie that I was like, "This is this is pretty cringe." Like this is uh, yeah. like overly like quirky and like they they played the the Remy Galliard like Mario Kart where he's like <laughs> driving a Mario Kart through like France in, through like uh you know grocery stores and shit and they're like arresting him three times like I was oh, I surprised that they one. threw I that like on the maybe screen. Maybe I'd seen that before but I didn't remember it's it. It's an old yeah, video. Really, it's like from really like <laughs> 10 12 years ago. That's a wild But without video. further ado, I'm I'm going to I'm going to read a synopsis of the film. Uh this again the Super Mario Brothers movie. Uh with There's a dragon, Pring there's a, a girl. He rescues Basically, the girl. Yeah. This is from IMDb. With help from Princess Peach, Mario gets ready to square off against the all-powerful Bowser to stop his plans from conquering the world. Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I also that's, that's I have a uh, I have a cam rip of the movie. I'm actually going to be <laughs> pulling up on oh, the side really? here so I can reference. That's probably useful because I was thinking about that because you know not everything's up top. It's you know is uh, Bowser a dragon or is he a turtle or is he both? Shut up. He's both. I think. Yeah. I think he's both. My bad. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I got to I actually have this in the... Well, how the fuck do I move this? I don't know. It's anyway, fine. Continuing. So, the movie starts with a, a minion driving a Mario Kart. And at that point, I'm already like, I'm doing the tugs collar thing. I'm like, oh, boy. I, I have I have a... Uh, I'll, I'll just say I have a prejudice against these kind of movies, like Illumination. They just... They're, they're, they're like... Yeah. I know they're not for adults, but like, they're very, very kiddie. You know what I mean? There's no like, soul I, I, to it. Like, we, like no, Disney, no. Disney and, like, for as many problems as Disney and DreamWorks have, I can tell that it's not just like slop for babies. Like there's at least some so, yeah. sort of like artistic yeah. merit to it. I, like, I, I, I cannot get behind the minions. Like it just feels like such a fucking marketing product. Yeah. Yeah. And like, I, it, I it's hate, so transparent. I hate to like, cause I, you know, we'll we'll sort of like discuss the the pros and cons of the movie, but like the fact that I knew that going into it, and as I was watching it, I was like, this just feels like they slapped a coat of paint over a Minions movie sort of thing. You know, not exactly because they spoke in English, you know, but they didn't yeah. speak in a a patois of different languages or whatever. But it was like the beats feel the same, the jokes feel the same, like the musical, like not notwithstanding like the the musical motifs from mario games but like the actual songs that they were using like uh the acdc song the no they played no sleep oh, till brooklyn yeah, yeah. like that type of thing was just like i'm hyper aware of the type of movie that they're trying to make this and the type of people that made it and like what it sounded like inside the writer's room when they were like and this would be a great uh, this would be a great point for like an 80s movie montage and like you know it'd be a perfect song 
I Need a Hero by Bonnie Tyler. And it's like, motherfucker, mm-hmm. God damn like, it, I, I hate this. I will I will say, like, it it felt like they pulled back on it more because, like, there was no, like, right. Uptown Funk gonna give it to you. It was all, like, 80s specific, which is appropriate because right, right. Mario's yeah. from the 80s. The needle drops weren't as bad as they could have been. I yeah. agree I with you, I, I was aware they of them. did take it out. But, of, yeah. It, 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 I but feel like I was I, also, like, whenever they happened, I was like, this isn't horrible. <laughs> it could have been worse. Like, it could have been every, like, 10 minutes. And it feels like there yeah. was less the more the movie went on. But I just feel like that kind of, like, oh, just throw in a, a pop culture song cheapens. Like, I don't expect that from Mario. Just, I feel like I hold Mario mm-hmm. to a higher standard. Yeah. Like, it's, like, yeah, so yeah. fantastical. It sh- they shouldn't even know what that stuff is. Or it's, like, I expect yeah, that in right. Sonic because, like, I don't know. I, mean, like, I do too. Yeah. I just want to. I also want to say before we like get way into like movie discussion. Um, so like I know this is kind of like a lame opinion. Like this is like saying like, oh, my favorite band is the Beatles, but like my favorite video game series is like the mainline Super Mario games, all the side scrollers, all the 3D ones. I just think like it always sets a standard for the medium as a whole, and they're all like they're not like I don't know they're they're not like always like technically. Like, but they're uh, like they are like a quintessential game. Like, there's a reason why they're so popular, and it's just one of those things where like you can put them in the hands of anybody, and anybody's going to have a good time. It's just like it has that widespread appeal, but also at the same time, you do have like a depth of like people that do speed runs and people that are really good, and you see people playing uh like the Mario Maker levels and shit like that, and it's just like you've got Which, that aspect of it and you have the fact that it's just like this is an entity that like so many people grew up with and it was readily accessible and the idea behind it of like oh dragon steals girl puts in castle your job is save her sort of thing it's just like mm-hmm. it's just like the perfect like you know yeah it sets the standard for the entire industry you know 100 percent. and like speaking of mario maker like when i got home from the movie like me and my girlfriend were playing Mario games like till like late at night. Like I, I booted up Mario Maker. I was playing some of my old levels and everything. Nice. And it just they're just such like fun games. Like they're just like pure fun. They're not right, diluted right. down like in the same way kind of Sonic games maybe became over time. But I wanted to ask you guys, what are your favorite Super Mario games? Like it doesn't have to be just the mainline ones, but like any any Mario games that are your favorites. Yoshi's Island. It counts. Yoshi's Island. Super Mario World Two. Yoshi's Island. Yeah. Uh, for me, it. I think my favorite might be Galaxy, and I haven't even okay. played Galaxy Two, so I don't know how that compares. I know a lot of people Galaxy like it more, including cool. you. It's it's basically I, I, yeah, I like it more. No, it's still it's, but it plays better. I think it just if you liked any of the yeah. plot, it's not, there's no plot. It's just gaming, uh, brother. Yeah, I but do the like, amazing level design. Yeah. I was watching like Arlo's video about like how Miyamoto hates <laughs> story. And I haven't seen that yet. I've been kind of avoiding it. Actually, he, he talks about how like in a lot of games, and Galaxy was one of them. How like the whole thing with like the storybook um, was like, uh, who was it? Who uh, I forget the name of the other guy who actually likes a story and like basically like snuck them into a bunch of Nintendo games despite Miyamoto not wanting them to be there. And Galaxy was an example of that, where like he snuck that storybook thing in there because there wasn't going to be any kind of story thing. Hmm. Uh, and yeah, I, yeah, I really I like that, that part of that game, even though it's like a side thing. It, yeah, no, it helps like with immersion a little bit. It you gives know, the world some games. flavor. Yeah, yeah, they're not about story, but like it, a little bit goes a long way. It's you know, like that's trajectory, like trajectory. You know, it it it's it adds a layer of just like there's purpose in what you're doing instead of just like you're jumping. Yeah, and there's like jumping, a sense jumping. of wonder yeah. to like the the characters and stuff. Right, Grant. What's your favorite Mario game? Um, I had something that I wanted to add on to that, but uh, I forgot. Um, I I will say so. I've been replaying Odyssey, and I'm like right at the end. Um. Yeah, you were saying you almost beat it right before the movie. Yeah, and I just didn't have enough time to, um, which was disappointing because it was like, you know, that would have been pl- perfect. You've played yeah. the game, now watch the movie. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's there's you can get like 999 stars, but like you buy the rest up until I think it's like 880. So I have like exactly one like tr- or moon, moon stars, whatever. I have like one left to get on the darkest side and then I've like a hundred percent of the game until I like buy the rest or whatever. And I will say like, I don't know. I, I know we reviewed Mario Odyssey like a while ago and um, yeah. I had sort of like a mixed, like I, I think it's generally positive or whatever, but 
since then, I've also gone back and like replayed 64 a little, replayed Sunshine, replayed Galaxy, and it's like, I don't know, I, I do think that Mario Odyssey is like maybe like the quintessential. Yeah, it's just like with the camera angles and stuff like that. It just it has the best feel. It has like maybe the most things you can do. It's not it's still accessible. It's not like, yeah, getting all the blue coins on uh, Super Mario Sunshine, which at times just felt like sucks, stupid and garbagey. Um, yeah. So I would say that. And like, I, I guess another sort of like talking point that might be worth addressing is also like. The Mario RPG games, like, you know, famously, I did a uh, playthrough of uh, Super Mario RPG 2, as it's mm-hmm. known. Um, and those always had just like a very comforting, like, you know, it's not the same as like you're jumping and stuff like that. But for a for a game that has essentially no story, which, again, dragon in a castle steals woman, you, you know, you save girl, you get coin, whatever, blah, blah, blah. Um, like there was like such like an emotional depth and warmth to a lot of those Mario RPG games. And I think if they were to like make a movie like this, there was a, you don't have to like replicate that. You don't have to make like Super Mario RPG the movie, but like there's some good shit in there that they could have like taken which I they they did nothing along those lines. It was I, just a like counterpoint, you know. counterpoint for Super Mario RPG. I genuinely think there's probably some licensing thing with Square. Oh yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not saying yeah. like a one to one ratio. wasn't in the movie? <laughs> I'm not saying Hello? like a one to one ratio. Like I know, just, I know, I know. Just reproduce the same thing. I'm saying that like you wanted more know, Easter eggs, is what you're saying? No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. Thing. I'm not saying that. That's story completely like story. not oh. what I'm saying at all. I'm saying that like. There is like an an emotional depth to some of those games where they did sort of expand the idea of like taking a simple story and making it a little more complex and like adding certain characters and stuff like that, that I feel like that little bit of complexity would have lended itself well to a movie like this because the movie was very like simple and stupid. I thought there was like, I did think there was little bits of that, Grant, like maybe uh, little bits, but I wanted more. (laughs) Well, like I, this I, is I, a I movie really for babies. What, we're like we're literally thirty year old soy lenials. This is for literal yeah, but babies. This is, this is also an entity that's been around for but like forty years. Babies deserve years, it, you know? know. Babies deserve babies good stuff. deserve true. more. I and okay, it's fair. Yeah, but like what I what I will say though is like at first I thought Bowser was just sort of this generic villain, but then when we started to kind of see him like with his like minions and like practicing to yeah, his minions, yeah. Per- Oh fuck! I shouldn't have said that. Uh, <laughs> oh banana! <laughs> oh boy! Uh, with his uh, with with his like uh, he's pr- practicing with like Kamek to promote to Peach. Yeah, there those felt like little bits of like you know you would see in like Paper Mario. Yeah, where, like, you yeah. see Bowser's kind of goofy side a little bit yeah. more, and it wasn't like played up like oh I'm Jack Black by the way, which there was a little little bit of that, but it I could have like- did I could have did without the song. To be completely oh, honest, I, I feel like the song could have been a little bit better. Just like, yeah, peaches, 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 peaches. I was well, like, what? Can we not apparently, do more? he wrote and recorded a demo in like a day, which oh, is just oh, like that that maybe, maybe sh- workshop it a little more. It, <laughs> and then they played it twice in the fucking movie. Yeah, they, they played did. it like once at the end, too. And it's just oh, like, oh, yeah, it's yeah. not that good. Don't force but it. I thought that like they, there was a lot of, well, not a lot. There were some elements of like, you know, pulling that. I don't know. I, I have we, a lot to say about this. But yeah, yeah. We ahead, start from like the beginning, the beginning of the movie yeah. a little bit. Yeah, yes. we're jumping all okay, over so the I, place. I, God. I'm actually, as we're talking, I'm actually watching a cam rip of this. I got it to work in my other... Uh, <laughs> so I want to say that, and this might be a minority opinion, but the beginning of the movie was my favorite part. It wasn't I, my favorite, but I actually liked it. Brooklyn... Yeah. was really enjoyable to me in a way that I was not expecting. I really enjoyed Agreed. watching Mario and Luigi and their plumbing business. And I honestly thought the scene of them like with the dog in the bathroom was Francis. really funny. <laughs> Like it's crazy. That, that, none, that, none, of the, be none of the games would have. None of their adventures or games or no, nothing would ever happen. Paper Mario, Mario Galaxy, none of that shit would have ever happened if it wasn't for Francis. 
the dog who was like he, wanted to bite them. By the way, was that dog like that design was very familiar? Is that from a, I think like, it's yeah, from yeah, that Secret from like World that. of Pets? I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was I was like, that. is that the dog that, yeah. from that movie? He, that's Which that's actually kind of makes sense. But that kind of bothers me. It's the one that Louis, Louis C.K. voiced it. Ooh, why didn't he talk in this movie? <laughs> I have a, a, just a nitpick. <laughs> I just think great. I wish the dog had a more Mario esque design because like, he looked really out yeah. of place. Is kind of my well, a little bit. Like, I was yeah. also thinking, and this is sort of like a morbid thought, but like uh, the dog and Luigi sort of had a little bit of thing. And I was like, this isn't the ghost. This do- dog doesn't die and turn into the ghost dog from, <laughs> oh, from uh, Luigi's, Luigi's mansion? mansion, does it? Yeah, when, that you know, would be for, so fucking funny. <laughs> for real, though, one of, one of the few <laughs> laugh out loud moments for me and the fact that they were laughing like I don't, I'm hard to make laugh. And so the fact yeah. that there were some laugh out loud moments for me is to me a positive. Uh, when the dog like was, was like giving him the death the... glare and the, like how long they dragged on that, I thought that was, I thought that was pretty Yeah, funny. it was like, the, like it just, like for me, it's like, I think all the, this felt different from other Illumination movies. Like it felt yeah, like it, Nintendo it had, had such it a had tight had grip. It had to be. It had to be. But like Nintendo was so fucking protective of their IPs. Like yeah. even like there was like a, like Bowser briefly appeared in Wreck-It Ralph and like, they were like, yeah, he yeah. can't talk. He won't drink his coffee that way. He doesn't look like that when he crosses his legs. Like they were so specific. So imagine all of those restrictions, like for this movie. It was like Illumination's probably like we can't do anything we normally would do that, which is a good thing. Uh, yeah. And then it was all like basically Nint- Nintendo was just like using them as a parasite for like their animation studio good. or something, as right. it should be. Again, yeah, which is good. I mean, I did get a sense that they were also like fans were like people there were at least some people at Illumination working at this movie who were genuine fans of the franchise I, I which would it. be hard oh, for which sure. would be for hard sure. to not find some Mario fans like anywhere right. yeah uh, in but it's like there's there are so many video game annotations where it's like dude people love like the Resident Evil movies couldn't you get people who actually gave a fuck and the movie wouldn't suck you know but yeah. it happens I, I guess like let me see who are who are the directors for this. I'm trying to see. Like they, I think they worked on. Um, I think the Teen Titans Go movie. Yeah, and maybe the Lego movie or something. I don't know if that's 100 percent true, but I wanted to We're say as a general Google note, this. It's too much work. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I tried for a second. I, I want to say quick. as a general note, just uh, that I thought the movie looked fucking incredible. Yes, it was pretty good. <laughs> Yeah, uh, which, it looks amazing. Which was better than it. like I was expecting it to look fine, and even from the trailers, I was like, and maybe it was like seeing it on the big screen that really helped. But I was very satisfied visually with how Same. it looked. Same, yeah. And I, I was speaking of visually, I don't will. But speaking of the Brooklyn stuff, though, like in the designs, because like Nico mentioned, like the dog could have looked a little more Mario like. So the people, all the people, looked very Mario like. Which I appreciated. Like, and it, we also saw a glimpse of Mario's family, which I feel like I should have hated because I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. You can't yeah. be doing this. It yeah. definitely, but like, I liked it. I, I definitely, liked it. There was definitely an aspect to it where, like, it almost felt wrong, but it could, it, but it didn't, it didn't, it wasn't like, what the fuck? I hate this. It was just, it felt yeah. like intrusive to me. Like, I should Well, and I think, this. I think also, like, Mario's dad was voiced by Charles Martinet, which yes, was, he was sort of yes. like, okay, like, you know, I, there's like something there, you know, in the same way that we talked about in The Last of Us, how like the voice of Ellie played Ellie's mom. It was sort of like a weird ana- yeah. analogous type yes. thing, you know. Analogous? No. Analogous. 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 There you um, go. We got it. Yeah, it was Analogous. also like weird, I guess, just the idea that like, yeah, they are human beings that live in like human brooklyn america and that like yeah they're plumbers or whatever but like they dress like that <laughs> you know like, hey, well I, I wanted to mention really quick as a parallel to odyssey because so and we were talking about this a little bit after the movie because we we sat around like i know you left a little bit earlier but we sat around yeah. and talked for for like an hour um <laughs> i would have liked to but i had a fucking no I, it's all good i mean that's what this, that's what this is for yeah. and i you know i right, waited, right. but i couldn't help myself you blew it but the the like what I love about Odyssey, like in New Donk City, is that the people are so realistic. It's so batshit weird that I have to respect it. Right. And I wonder, like, and I obviously the the movie's canon does not have to be the same as the games canon. Yeah, but yeah. I thought, like, it just I I don't know if this is like correct or not. But in the games, is Mario are Mario and Luigi from New Donk City originally? Because that's where no, like, Pauline so, lives. So the original canon, I remember looking this up when like the trailers first came out. 
And there was a lot of talk about how it was going to be an isekai story, which if people don't know what that means, I actually didn't know what it means before people started <laughs> talking about it. But it means like someone who's like sort of like fish out of water, like thrust yeah. into a world they don't belong to. Um, yeah. So people were talking about like, what is the actual canon of the Mario franchise? And it is. Let's that not they get into all that. <laughs> they did originate in Brooklyn. Like the original canon is they originated in Brooklyn. Um, and I believe like the original Donkey Kong t- game takes place in Brooklyn or at least in New York. And then, yeah, the Mushroom Kingdom was like Mario ends up in the Mushroom Kingdom. But so then, that is that's what, technically but, but, true but, to the faithful to the canon in, but, a, in a loose sort of way. But, 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 but if you take Yoshi's Island <laughs> canon, they're from the Mushroom Kingdom and the stork takes them to Brooklyn or where the fuck. Yeah. Right, so, right. So, you know, who knows? There's a little bit of magical trickery that's going on. Which could on. What still about, technically be true in this world. We could maybe. find what, what that is, out later. Oh, Mario what is New Mario's City, mom though? and dad didn't bang one out and have two children. <laughs> Gross. Is that what you're saying to me? Whoa. They just sprouted from the ground. Whoa. Like mushrooms, yes. Like mushrooms. Like Maybe that's the, why the Mario toads, doesn't the like toads are mushrooms. apes. The toads are apes. Mario, Luigi, and Peach are like humans. You know, they evolved from toads. I'm just going to assume that's correct. Yeah. But yeah, it's, I don't know if yeah. like New Donk City is like, because in the game, like they all, like it's all, all this, like there's all this Donkey Kong visual stuff. And right, like it's, right. it's looks like they, there's even the same girders you run on from the arcade game. Pauline, who you save, is the mayor of New Donk City. And it seems like people who know who Mario is there. So I'm like, right, it's convoluted. I, I thought the same thing. I was like, isn't he from there? But maybe I that's like what he it. makes to be like his new home. This like, definitely won't know. be a three hour long episode. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> we're fine. We're, like doing done. fine. we're doing no, fine. We're doing fine. No, let's get, let's yeah, get let's back, get to, the back movie. to the movie. Yeah. So then Mario and Luigi fall through a pipe and they end up in the Mushroom Kingdom. Well, just that's the canon of this movie. It doesn't have to be the same as the yeah, games, yeah, but that's right. what happens here. So Mario and Luigi fall through. They're in the Mushroom Kingdom. It's an isekai. Whoa, where am I? He meets Toad. You know, Toad's got a frying pan. I thought Toad was a lot of fun in this movie. Could have used a little more of him, but I liked him. Yeah, I felt like it was used appropriately. I just didn't want to get sick of him because like at the beginning, yeah, I was like, yeah. I'm going to get sick of this. And then like, I don't know, over time, it was like, this is fine. You know, you know what? No, I agree. Actually, that's a good yeah. point, because like, I feel like there was a, some stuff I felt like should be annoying and could be annoying and then ended up not being annoying at all. Same. Right. I appreciated yeah. that. I didn't really think about the fact that it was Keegan Michael Key a lot. Uh, he did a great know, job. I didn't even know that was. I, one of the, I did like when a like a a voice actor would disappear into the character, and I wasn't constantly thinking like this right. is that person, mm-hmm. you know. And Which, you know what? Speaking of, <laughs> there was the opposite say, of that for sure. Yeah, a lot. I'm yeah. just gonna say, you know what? I liked Chris Pratt in this movie. Yeah. I thought he, that he, he did exceeded a expectations. Good job. I will. Say, I went yeah. in thinking it was gonna be like really bad, and actually, like I didn't. I just kind of forgot he was playing it. He was yeah. not the worst voice actor in this movie. No, no, all. not by far. Yeah. No, so we'll get to that. I think we all know who that is. Yeah. I was never fully opposed to him as a character, and I went in thinking he would be fine, and I thought that he was fine, but I do still feel like they easily could have found someone else who would have done a better job. Probably. I th- Maybe. I- I I also understood the placement of like I I think in the in the context like yeah he wasn't my favorite whatever but at the same time it's like I they also did the thing at the beginning where they showed the commercial and you know wahoo we're the Mario brothers and then like it shows them watching it and they're like should we have done the voice like should we have done these voices and they were like no nah, no and it was sort of like yeah. self referential yeah. and then Charles Martinet turns around and he goes. I thought they were great uh, or whatever, you know. <laughs> yeah, um, he, yeah. Charles Martinet's other to, character, he was Giuseppe. supposed to be Jumpman or Osan. I always forget. It's one of the two. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's playing an arcade game in the corner called Jumpman, right? Who but you know, also that, like, like guy who was like bullying them. Who was that? that he was the from Wrecking oh, Crew. Fuck, fuck. Yeah, Wrecking Crew. Uh, fucking what that was. Uh, Spike. Yeah. Also, yeah. like Spike looked like he was the kind of guy who records like angry vlogs in his truck. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Voice, these Goombas voice. these days. Uh, Se- yeah, Sebastian uh, Manis- Manisculo, whatever his oh, name is. Oh, was that? Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. But I also like, I, I, I just want to say this. 
So before the movie, you know, we all took that picture. We're like, oh, oh we're all doing the soy face and pointing, right, like, ironically, right. making fun of ourselves. And not five minutes into this movie <laughs> was I doing that, like, <laughs> sincerely. I was like, I had to, I, I caught myself. I'm like, oh, my God. You were, my you were sitting so a seat sore. over. So sore. My jaw You're, was so sore you were, by the end. Kevin, you were sitting a seat over from me, but your girlfriend was sitting next to me and she was soy facing yeah. the entire movie, <laughs> like full body know, soy facing. And it was it was infectious. <laughs> she's she's very expressive. Um, But like when when I was like w- when they like zoomed out from the TV and they were in punch out pizzeria and there's like li- there's like glass Joe on the on the por- on the picture of black glass Joe on the wall and the duck from like the duck from Duck Hunt. I was yeah, like, yeah. Oh my god! This I did, is like I, I, I think that that was like one of the better aspects of the movie. And of course, you can't make an entire movie out of just Easter eggs. But like, I know, yeah, you can. You know, it, they, they it's it's did. weird because I it, it is Easter weekend though, Grant. Lest lest we that forget. is true. He, he uh, died for this movie. God bless. <laughs> um, but the I think like in my head, I I couldn't stop comparing it to like space jam you know because that was just like hey remember this reference or whatever and it was like at least it was all within one property sort of thing so it felt like an achievement as opposed to like hey uh the white walkers exist you got we we own them now you know that sort of thing a hundred percent like and i was worried about that because i heard there was going to be a lot of easter eggs and it's like okay i right i hate that i know i'm going to really fucking love that it was but like I thought good. The movie, it was a good it was, interpretation. It was so tasteful. It was so yeah, tasteful. Yeah. Like, Space Jam was just like, look, look, it's our toys. <laughs> yeah. And I, this movie yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. this movie's like, oh, feel free to look if you'd like. We have a I, movie going on, but feel free to peruse. We have a lot of Easter eggs on display. I also feel like they did a good job choosing specific references that they wanted to explore. And like, I thought it was going to be just like an overwhelming amount of small, like Easter egg references. But instead it was like, Let's take this one thing and like build a whole sequence around it. Um yeah, and yeah. and have all the references within that be part of the larger reference as opposed to just random references. It felt so natural and like there were so many things like they even had like a there's like a billboard for like Nintendo playing cards which is like what they did yeah, in like the yeah, 1800s yeah. before games and like it was like oh my god there's so much fucking love in this movie. And it, I, again, it did not hinge entirely on that. It was just like these things that were so clever were just like little like, oh, here they are, you know. Yeah. But anyway. And again, I, it's I, like again, a celebration of like this thing's been around for a long time. And so like, you know, the, yeah, the yeah. people in the audience that like are familiar with those things, you know, and if if you're not, then you're just a, a five year old that's, uh, you know, sucking on their thumb going, ooh, bright colors, you know. Exactly. There's something for everybody. Right. Um, but I also like, I also like, I know we hinging on the Brooklyn part a little bit long, but I like when like Mario and his family got in that argument and then he goes up to his room and he's like playing Kid Icarus on yeah, NES yeah. and he's got like a Star Fox R-Wing statue on top of his TV. There were just like so yeah, many things. Yeah. And I, I like, I also, I like that he just like, cause like, it was like not like set in the eighties. Clearly there was like, he, like, you know, they had smartphones. Luigi's ringtone was a GameCube startup. <gasps> and, uh, <laughs> There was all these little things like that in the movie, like and there was like it was clearly contemporary times. But the fact that Mario went up and was playing NES right, made it right. feel like a lot more. Like I, I was watching someone else say this, but it made it, it felt a lot more timeless. Yeah, and also yeah. like you said, a history of or a celebration of the history of all these, you know, all that they put out. Right, and I guess the fact that it was Kid Icarus was also like just the funny choice to go with, like. Why Kid Icarus? I don't know, but that's funny. Yeah. yeah, it was nice to pick something that was like a little more less mainstream. Not Zelda. Yeah. Yeah, not exact. That would have been a little yeah. bit like eye rolly, but Kid, mm-hmm. also Kid Icarus is a punishingly hard game. Yeah, so yeah. Like, I thought it was funny that it's like he's playing that game of all games because it is difficult. But uh, I did yeah. like the little mm-hmm. quip at the beginning where they were like, uh, look at how you guys are dressed. And like Mario made some joke about like, hey, you know, it's it's important to like have iconic features to make you stand out, which is like the entire reason why he has like gloves and a mustache, you know, sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. Because like visually... You know, it, like those little like things like that. It's like in terms of like quip writing, joke writing and stuff like that. I appreciate more little just like subtle things like that than like the the big like beat you in the face with humor type stuff, which, you know, just didn't roll so well for me. I immediately liked the relationship between Mario and Luigi. And I felt like that made yes. it, even though they spent most of the movie separated, that foundation right. like carried a, like at least a decent amount of emotional weight through the movie 
hundred percent. Baby yes. Mario I thought was good. Charlie Day was really. Oh good yeah, as Luigi. Baby Mario. Mm. Yeah, no, Charlie Day fucking killed it as Luigi. I thought yeah, he was yeah. so good. Yeah. And again, if you would have told me ten years ago that fucking Charlie from Always Sunny is going to play Luigi in an Illumination Super Mario Brothers movie, I think my head would explode. Same. I think a like a Luigi's Mansion spinoff would be awesome. You oh, know? dude, you yeah. know they're hinting at that. Like the the parts where Luigi so. was separated in the Dark Land or whatever, and he had the flashlight. He's like Mario. Yeah, Mario. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was like, dude, you know that they want to do it. I think they're gonna do a Donkey Kong thing first, which I, I think am so, not yeah. fucking happy about. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay, okay, okay. So we'll we gotta we'll keep going. To we, we're, they're in the Mushroom yeah, yeah, Kingdom, yeah. and they go to. I got the movie open right now. I'm looking at it right now. So they're <laughs> the part where Toad is walking him through the plaza of the Mushroom Kingdom town. I was yeah. like. Easter egg, Easter egg, Easter egg. Like, the, again, my, the, like, Nick, like Nico said, my, my fucking jaw. Yeah, the crazy cap store, uh, the Yoshi coins from Super Mario World. Um, yeah. Just fucking like so much to, uh, there's so much, it's a smorgasbord of Easter eggs, basically. Yeah, it looked really cool. When they started going up to the castle, I think I said this to you last night, but that felt extremely inspired, but specifically by Mario World 3D, or, yeah, th- or 3D pipes, World, yeah. excuse me. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 didn't, I didn't want to correct you, but thank you for correcting me. <laughs> <laughs> I will say, um, I think that one of my favorite visual gags was like at that point in time, like when he's following Toad around and Toad keeps going through different pipes. And then he mm-hmm. goes to the part where it's like there's like six pipes and he goes down mm-hmm. one and yeah. pops up another. And then he goes, oh, that's not right. And he goes down one and then comes back out the same one. And he's like. Well, how did that happen? And then he goes down a different one, and it's like this is like playing the game. Like this is the same it was logic. A si- it was a side-scrolling perspective too. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, was like, like, dude, this is just- that was a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, I loved it. I loved it. Right. Um, and then like we so we get to the point where like they eventually get up to the castle, and Princess Peach is having like a war room meeting. And this part was like I I kind of did laugh a little bit at this because I felt it took itself a little too seriously. Yeah, like they have that big thing come up, and there's that Toad with the deep voice. Like, he's like Bowser is taking over the Jungle Kingdom, and we have to act fast or else we'll you know. It just was like, what is going on? It was a little kinda, much. It was a little. I kind of I kind of liked it. It felt I don't know. I liked it, but it was funny. It just was like it felt like all of a sudden like shit got real so quick and it was like, like i like that there Mario. was like yeah i yeah. like that like they had like the little overworld map of like these are you know like the level design sort of thing it was like oh this yeah. is cool but like yeah the whole like yeah war room thing was like eh, this feels derivative a little bit you know i don't know and then eventually, you know, we see the castle, you know, it's there's a lot of Easter eggs. There's all the paintings on the wall, the sunroom, do- there's sundial on the floor, all this stuff, you know, like Super Mario 64. And, uh, and Mario impeached me for the first time. And she's like, oh, you're another human being? Okay. And I'm sitting there scratching my chin. Are we going to get some lore here? You know? And then I eventually, like, Not she's much. like, okay, I need, like, I need your help because we're going to try to take down Bowser and we have to recruit the Kong army. And like I guess like I know that Mario and Donkey Kong are like technically of the same universe. Um because like obviously the original game Donkey Kong, but yeah. I've always in my mind I've always kind of kept them separate. You know, like Donkey Kong Country feels so it feels like another game series in this in a completely different separate. It was like a reinvention of that character, you know. It like, was Donkey but Kong like I, I was spin off or no, Mario is actually doing the I, spinoff, and then it, yeah. and then Donkey Kong became the spinoff. Because yeah, it's like a. I think that they're both know. the spinoff. It doesn't feel other, wrong yeah. to me at all that they would be included the way that they were. No, like, it, it didn't. I don't know. They're so like, they are so tied to each other to me, at least, especially in their origins. That like it makes sense to use this movie as a way to explore those characters as well. It'd be weird if they kept them explicitly separate. And like, it just was like, it just took me a second to get used to because I always, for some reason, think of them different in my head. But I mean, like you said, to be fair, Donkey Kong is in all the fucking Mario Kart games, Mario Party, Mario Tennis. So, yeah, it makes sense why he'd be here. But again, you know, she's like, we got to recruit the Kong army. You know, these guys are a big deal in this world. And they're Bowser's trying to go through each kingdom, take it over and get the uh, power stars. I think they call them, right? Yeah. yeah. The superstar? Yeah, the superstar. Super, superstar, yeah. yeah, superstar. And, uh, that's when they, there's like this training arc, like, I need a hero! And Mario's going through the whole thing. And then, of course, we see, and this is a complaint I saw people have in the movie is like, why does Mario need to be there if Peach is so good at this? Because she needs help. Can't yeah. just be her, you know? Can't just be one person who's really good. Yeah. You know what I mean? I like yeah, that. Sometimes a girl needs help. Yeah. Every, I didn't like that the they made her a strong it. feminist girl <laughs> boss. I think that that sends yeah. the wrong message to little boys, which I mean, let's be honest. Like, who do you think is watching this movie? 
30 year old uh, you know what 30 year old man <laughs> yeah no, i thought yeah. like i like that i mean it was good that they didn't go over the top with that they, yeah I would have it could have been cringy like that I that avengers rolled. scene with all the girls you know yeah <laughs> I, f- I do feel like i do feel like her personality was a little more daisy than peach personally Ooh. i mean oh the, the very... tom the tomboy Here's, no, that's here's very, what I like. That's a very valid point. That's a very valid point. Here's what I like. I mean, that was the same thing was in it, the first Mario movie. It was like, oh, except that was actually Daisy, right? And the rigid, the shitty. Oh live man, I haven't, one. I haven't seen it. In uh, so I don't long, remember since I was a kid. I don't remember. I do want to rewatch it, but <laughs> <laughs> but I wanted to say. So we haven't talked about any of the Bowser scenes yet. But yeah. what I liked, what I thought, I thought the way they characterized Peach worked because you. Don't want to make her a doormat in a movie in 2023. Yeah, and also what it's I, like that the, been brave I, sorry, of them, though. To, to like <laughs> uh, cut you off real quick. I also felt like the the whole thing of like he's rescuing Luigi instead of Peach was also like one like refreshing because it's just like okay, well if they just do oh he's rescuing the princess, it's just kind of like okay, like yeah, you know, maybe put well, a little more effort into it. And two, it made sense because it's like they're both not from this world. And like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, it it made more sense in the trajectory. And then at the end, of course, she like gets kidnapped by Bowser anyway. So you get uh, you get a little of both, you know. Yeah, well, you I, get to see more of the world look up from Luigi's perspective. Right. And also you get to see his scaredy cat persona a lot more. Right. You know yeah. what I mean? Anyway, so the Josh. Point, but, yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> the point I wanted to make was what I thought was brave was how creepy they kept Bowser's motivations and how like really not shy they were to explore this. He is in love with Peach and he wants her to marry him, a sort of thing, which yeah, I was like Mario genuinely Odyssey. kind of surprised that they kept so heavily as part of the movie as they did. Well, I mean, she you, was like, you gotta. no, immediately. You so gotta. Like, I, I yeah, that yeah was but, just, but just having him be so like, over the top about this motivation. I I feel like that would have been an easy thing for the writer to say this is this is too weird for a movie now. I mean I I think it worked just because they played it up so much that it mm-hmm. was just like impossible to take seriously. It's it's right. just like, you know, it, it 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 didn't come from a place of like I'm here to like, you know, uh claim my dominion. It's just like, oh, like a, a stupid crazy person with like a, an obscure crush that like like he's just like a big toddler sort of thing, which I right. feel like was better than like to give him actual like adult motivation, which would have gone yeah. down a pretty dark path, you know. Yeah, but they still flirted with it a little bit. Like he yeah, was but, still you know. like they implied that he would have been fine with her marrying him under like duress. Well, well did yeah. you guys ever read like there yeah, was like, that's in, what in, happened in, in the video game? <laughs> right, <laughs> yeah, I which know. is true. Yeah, but I'm saying or, it's cool was, that they included that in the like they kept that yeah. in the movie without shying yeah. away from yeah. it. Yeah. Did you guys ever read this? Like it was like, a comic or a manga or something. It was like a Nintendo Power back in like the early '90s. It was called like Super Mario Adventures, I think. I think so. No. I think they have. It like, was like, this big yellow. I think this they big have, like, yellow book. Actual, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I, re- I used to read that like over and over when I was a little kid, and it was like, this cool story about like it, it felt like you know I remember like I I actually picked up a copy of it like last year they reprinted it because I lost mine from when I was a kid, and I'm like this if they just like follow this for the Mario movie they're they're set you know though I think they'll probably do that for the second one because you know spoiler alert Yoshi's in it, right. um, <gasps> but they like that the comic book is the same thing of like if there are so many beats that felt a little bit similar especially with bowser like you know he's this big like dumb sweetheart you know he's like wants to propose to peach and all this stuff in the right way right and i i'm I'm glad like and it was similar to how they kind of I, like uh characterized him in like the rpg games too just sort of like intimidating but like a, a big dumb sweetheart you know that's yeah. why he's the most popular character to draw mario porn of bar none <laughs> Bar none. There, I've I've Bar seen fucking none. I've seen so much more Bowser porn than Peach or Daisy or Rosalina. Yeah, it's, it's easy, you know. It's yeah. knocking. Uh, He's a big yeah, it's, bear. The, it's the mystery of like what does tired. his penis look like? You know, everybody's <laughs> wondering. Everybody's got their own rendition of the important it. Important questions. Yeah, 
Um, so anyway, and anyway, yeah. they they go to, they go to the Kong the Kong Island or whatever, and uh, oh, we also see like I, I also love like I because I'm I have the movie open in a small window still here, the part where like Bowser and like he's in that he's in that uh, I don't again I want to say with his minions but all his hench creatures they're the all like Christmas. rocking out to that band you know what I mean mm-hmm. yeah yeah I love that would have been nice would have been nice if it was maybe the Koopa Kids in the band maybe you know? that would have been the next good, one. Yeah. They, I saw like I someone said like you oh, an, the next an Easter egg was that he was playing like Ludwig's piano and it's just I like uh, I, I'm at that part right now yeah like it was Ludwig von put, Koopa put, put him yeah. in the fucking movie you know why don't we see them in the movie that would have been dude, great they're gonna you know, blow like, their load in the first movie <laughs> yeah dude you, they're gonna be in the next one you're gonna like it's gonna be like you know, Eric it's, Andres it like Mickey or I, something I feel like you know and maybe this is just like how these companies have been like acquiring you know the rights to things and stuff like that and it totally changes the landscape but like for instance when they made the the Roger Rabbit movie they were like this is the one time that we can get both Mo- Mickey Mouse and Bugs Bunny on the screen so in hype. the same movie let's fucking go and they did it and I do feel like that there is this like little bit of like with these movies, they're like, we're going to get a sequel. This is going to be, you know, this is going to blow up like mm-hmm. we're going to do a whole cinematic universe. And so they do withhold ah, no. those types of details. Mm-hmm. And it's just like, I wish that they did. I wish that they would just go all out and just put everyone in there. And like, you know, for the amount of Easter eggs that they had, they could have did a lot more. They could have put more characters in. And then we could have gotten like a a little more of an elevation. But they go like, yeah, let's not blow our load too early. Let's like, you know, this person will will like sort of hint to them a little. And it's just like, just put them in. You own the rights know, to man. all of them. Just put yeah, them all in. I don't know if I agree. I feel the like movie if people felt- already complained it was overstuffed. Yeah, so it's like been I overstuffed, but like I don't think that putting the Koopalings in the movie would have been like detracting that, from the main plot. No, line, but there's you know so many. I mean? But like you're saying, your point is there are so many things they could have done that with. I think they're yeah, beyond they like more. an Easter egg, and they deserve to be characterized more. And the movie would be too yeah. fucking long. So maybe but you like, don't have the, to yeah, characterize yeah, yeah, them more. Yeah. You just put them in. But like they, they got to be in the sequel. We already know Yoshi's yeah. going to be in it. I hope Wario is going to be in it. We'll see. I don't know. Yeah, I would. I, I would be so surprised if Wario and probably Waluigi are not in yeah. the sequel. It just like for some reason like they don't ever like use them in the main games anymore. Like Wario hasn't been in a main Mario game in what like thirty fucking years. Yeah. Mm-hmm. At this point, maybe yeah. a little bit less, but I I would have thought that maybe they wouldn't be willing to use those characters. But there were enough things in this movie that felt weirdly toned enough that that I was like, no, I could definitely see the people who made this movie finding a way to use Wario. Maybe. Well, I want to say like after, you know, on the they're on their way to the Kong Island or whatever. And the scene that really fucking like like hit like made me like love this a lot was the montage, not the training one, but the montage when they're like Toad, Peach, and Mario are like going through like all the different like areas, like Bob yeah, on Battlefield yeah. from Mario 64, Toast Arena from Mario Odyssey, the level from Mario Brothers One, where like there's like the jumping fish on the bridge. It was like yeah. this right. is the perfect way to encapsulate all these set pieces from the games. And I was like, I mm-hmm. fucking love this. I almost wish there was more of that, but again, like, yeah, you, you got to do a plot at some point. It's it's just <laughs> like, I don't know, it, it's hard to find, like, a weird balance of, you know, I guess, again, like, a, a thing that was successful, like, in comparison to, like, other video game movies was, like, um the Detective Pikachu movie, like, I feel yes. like we talked yeah. about and I liked a lot, and I think that that was, like, a good iteration of, like, a lot of the same, you know, types of things that we're talking about. And I wish it was more Detective Pikachu than it was Sonic movie. And maybe it was like a little sort of in between the two. You yeah, know? that kind of feels right. Yeah, because yeah. the Sonic movie, like, okay, I will say this. You know, I don't hate the Sonic movies. I've, I've gone on record in saying I like the second one quite a bit. Right. But like, you know, we all had that feeling of the first Sonic movie when we see Sonic speeding through all the loops and he's in Mobius and stuff. And right. it's like, I wonder what it would have been like if the movie was just that. Yeah. And the Mario movie, the Mario movie was that for Mario, and there was yeah. no fucking Donut Lord or any <laughs> bullshit like that. We had to like yeah, whatever, yeah. you know. And it wasn't following any one specific game, which is like Detective Pikachu. It was like Detective Pikachu took a lot of like moving yeah, parts yeah. and pieces from all the games, right. and that's what this fucking movie did for Mario. It was a lot, yeah, it was a lot like that. Like, you know, again, you can sort of like, you know, pick out different, you know, criticisms mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But yeah, that was like a good aspect of it, you know. Zwick in the yeah, chat is, this to Zwick in the chat is like saying Mario also didn't have cop propaganda. So fucking true. 
<laughs> Wait, was there, was there cop propaganda in this? In Sonic. No, in no, Sonic, in, I think in Sonic. Said. Oh, in Sonic, duh, duh, yeah. Yeah, no, you're right, you're right yeah, about that. Mario Mario's says like, A-cab. He actually, they ran right past the cops to get in that giant sewer pipe in the beginning of the movie. Yeah, yeah. fuck the police. <laughs> yeah, I think Who are telling to shut the fuck up? Who? Who cares? Wick's telling himself to shut the fuck up. I don't know. I'm watching up. the movie right now. I can't yeah. be bothered about that. Con- continue. Um, I'm at the part. I'm at the part where they're they're racing around uh, Kong Island. Oh, I also want to say, like, uh, well, we like get into that or whatever. Like, one thing that, like, again, sort of bothered me. It's just like a minor gripe or whatever. But the idea that, like, so much stuff they left completely unexplained. Like, and it wouldn't even take that, like, much of like a whatever. But when they're doing like the the obstacle course at the beginning and he's like, how do I do that? And she's like, power ups, you idiot. And it's just like, that's not really how the power ups work. And also, like, you don't have to explain it in this. Like, it was just like a weird explanation of whatever. And I had the same gripe with like powers when they get to the carts and he's like, what are you waiting for? Build your cart. And it's like, uh, that's like a weird explanation of like. You, I'll just build your Mario Kart. Like, oh, okay, no, no reason. Just build your cut. Like, I don't know. He's like, oh, by the way, we also call them Mario Karts here. We don't know who Mario is. <laughs> Wait, I mean, they did, didn't do they, that. Did yeah, they yeah. actually no, call the okay. counter? I, no, I, I, no, I, I do, do, do got to say, I do got to say, yeah. the fact that Mario didn't like mushrooms, I thought that was a little, little gay, a little cringe. I was like, really? I, I thought it was kind of. It I thought it was kind of charming. Like when you get to play the mushroom spaghetti, he's like, come on, dad, you know, I hate mushrooms. And yeah, it's I like, mind oh, that. he is I, not, I, he is not going to like this. I didn't like how they kept bringing it up though. Like and hammering it in. I agree that that was, yeah, you can do it once. Story. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. He doing it. And I was like, come on. Like, yeah. If he had maybe like grimaced later on once or twice, like that'd be fine. But they like made such a big deal out of it. Well, the fact that they made it, he's like Indiana Jones with snakes, you know, Ugh, why do it have to be mushrooms? Yeah. <laughs> Not as, but then not anyway, as good. No, not as good. I'll give you that. Yeah. So the, the uh, so Kong then they, Island is, thing. Yes, that's where I'm at in the movie right now. Um, watching it muted, by the way. Don't worry. I can hear everything everybody's saying. Uh, it's kind of interesting that, like, you know, in the lore of this world, like that the Kongs invented the kart racing thing. I thought that was kind of fun, actually. And it was also like they can't not include Mario Kart stuff in this movie because, like, Mario oh, yeah. Kart is so fucking popular. It is like. Like Mario Kart 8 on Switch is like one of one of Nintendo's like fucking best selling games ever by a decent margin. And there's like the phone game too. It's it, they could not put it in here. You know what I mean? And, there and I thought that Rainbow Road was like one of the most fun things, you know, yeah. like 100%. in the movie. There were deliberate the, references to Diddy Kong Racing, right? Like isn't the part where uh, like they're going up towards like the castle where he like the cart like takes off and like starts flying towards the waterfall. Isn't that like a level in Diddy Kong Racing? I don't know. I think that's like I have no idea. there's something like that in uh, maybe Mario Eight, probably. I yeah, because they have the gliders in there. Yeah, yeah. But there's but like also, a flying element in Diddy Kong Racing too. I mean, yeah, you can there. fly planes, but like the oh, gliders yeah. are specifically for Mario Kart. <laughs> right, yeah. but, right, right, right. Okay. <laughs> so then, uh, you know, they get it. They finally get to the Kong. The Kong. Uh, they meet the Kong King, the King of Kong. Remember that movie? Mm-hmm. They okay. they meet they yeah. meet they meet Cranky Kong. They should have put that guy in the movie. Okay, I they got should beef. have had Billy this Mitchell is- instead. I agree. <laughs> this is the one part of the movie I got beef. So Cranky Kong. Ah uh, yes, I think we Cranky all do. Kong in the movie is Donkey Kong's son. However, in the in canon in the games, the original Donkey Kong is Cranky Kong. So his son I is Donkey this. Kong I Jr. And then modern day Donkey Kong is Donkey Kong Jr.'s son. He's Nico, there is and like I'm I'm gonna plug this. I didn't work on it, but it's a good video. There is a really excellent hard drive video where uh, Fudge, who runs the channel, did a deep dive investigation on who is Donkey Kong Jr. And a lot of the lore has been retconned or changed, but most of it actually does say that uh, Donkey Kong Jr. is the, like Donkey Kong Country Donkey Kong as a kid, and he grows up to be like the one with the tie we all know. When did they when they fucking retcon this shit? Because I think in like DK in I don't original Donkey whatever. So okay, we're changing the, changing the canon, but I still- and then and then Donkey Kong Country he does say like I forget he says my idiot son or my idiot grandson. I fucking forget. Yeah, it does like, seem like it would have been hard to be faithful to that original canon in a way that didn't require like an annoying level of exposition. Well, well actually, uh, he's not technically my son, but I, I also felt yeah, like, didn't right. they do that <sighs> like in Donkey Kong 64 also? Was it just like, yeah, my Probably. nitwit son sort of... Like, I, I feel like that's just sort of like... 
who care? You know, I don't, there's some things where I, I really can't pick gripes with literally everything, you know. I hadn't really noticed the design in the trailers, but Donkey Kong's design in the movie I really liked because it felt very, yeah, I very faithful to it. like, oh, I don't know. I, it felt really faithful to like original Donkey Kong art yes. as opposed to like they didn't make yeah, it I can more sort of like that, I guess. they didn't make it more like Donkey Kong 64 style. They made it, it more like It was a perfect like, mix, I thought. It was like yeah, a, a little bit, bit of a mix. I, I feel like I'd prefer the Donkey Kong Country slash DK64 designs more, yeah. but you know, whatever. Yeah, and I mean, like, they, so then anyway, like, you know, there is this battle arena where they're, I don't know, I guess, it's, is this supposed to be like Smash Bros or something, kind of? Like, they're fighting so. each other in front of everybody? Kind of. And, and again, another thing where he was like, uh, we'll go ahead and you can fight my son. Uh, there's power-ups in the level. You're welcome, Mario. And it's just like, how does he know that the power-ups, like, work and that there are power-ups and that the power-ups are just a thing that exists in, like... It's just one of those things where they're like, just yeah, DK shouldn't know fuck it, that. whatever. It doesn't matter, right? Like, just yeah, we had to include. It's I, I almost would have just them said nothing and just not addressed it and just been like, yeah, there's some mushrooms there. Uh, I don't yeah, know what no, they I, do. Like, I, don't, I, I, I don't didn't, know. I didn't think about that, but I, I do agree with you. Greg. I it did just, like it that the DK me a little rap too much. was in it. I was kind of like, it might. That was cool. Oh, yeah. I was like, yeah, DK. And then, of course, you know, we talked a little bit after the movie, but it, it bears repeating. Uh, Grant Kirkhope was so excited before this movie came out. Like, he's like, everybody sing in the theater when you hear the song come on. And then, like, the movie comes out. He's like, ah, oh, fucking hell. They didn't. And his, his name's not in the credits. He, yeah. And he's been, put, like, tweeting about it all week about how depressed he is, which is like, I mean, it's <laughs> That's so he's, sad. But it's like, okay, to be, to be right. I know they should have. But, like, to be fair, like, there was, like, another song from Bowser's Fury. Like in the credits, it just was like you know Bowser's Fury from Super Mario 3D right, World. Plus I saw that. Bowser's yeah. Fury. That shit is not pose- nearly as iconic as the DK rap. True, right, I, I, right. I know, I know, I know. They should have done it. And it's, it's, it has vocals and everything and lyrics. They should have done it, even if it was brief. But lo- I love, I love this segment. Though. I, I actually, I really enjoyed the fight between DK and uh, Mario a lot more than I thought I would. It was fun. You know yeah. what I mean. Yeah. I, 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 he got oh he got the cat box. <laughs> uh, I like that actually quite a bit. I and will I say like, all, like all, uh, I I didn't think that Seth Rogen's voice acting was bad, but it did take me out when he would. <laughs> that felt so like, intentional. Does. Where they were like, yeah, it'll be funny if we just have him do the Seth Rogen thing. Agreed. I think he but just like, didn't DK care. does that. He just I don't think like Seth Rogen even cared. Like I don't know. I no, thought, I don't no, think so don't either. Think. But no. that's not, he's not even the worst Kong voice actor. No, no, and like, no. I was going to say real quick, I liked all the Easter eggs to like, you know, you had Diddy Kong, Dixie Kong, Chunky, Chunky. Kong, Chunky all the, was in there, Swanky yeah. Kong, all these people in the crowd. And then you had Cranky Kong. He was kind of a mixed bag for me in this movie. His design was a little bit like weird. Uh, like, yeah, I, I didn't even to- totally clock that it was Cranky Kong at first. And I, I kept expecting to see an actual Cranky Kong. And then I was like, oh, wait, this is, this is Cranky Kong. <laughs> Yeah, and then because he I didn't look old all, enough, his voice, uh, Fred Armisen was a little bit. Uh, Not good. I didn't even know. I didn't even know it was Fred, Fred Armisen, Armisen going in, did, and it took me a while to realize he did the only voice that he like knows how to do, which is like the old Jewish lady in Portlandia type voice. Yeah, it's just like, oh my god, for Cranky Kong, you're doing. Oh, Should have had Larry uh, David do it. Like, do it. Or literally oh anybody, like just that been somebody amazing. that sounds like a cranky old man, not like an yeah. old Jewish woman. Like I, I don't didn't think it was great. I but I hate that. It didn't. It didn't. I don't know. It didn't like great on me or anything. Now I'm pissed off. It wasn't Larry David. <laughs> I'm just pissed off. It was Fred Armisen. I just don't think Fred Armisen's that great. I like him from time. I, I don't know. I, I like him in different I've stuff. I've never watched I, anything with him in it. So. I think he can be very funny, but I've also seen him do some incredibly cringe stuff. Never watch his fucking stand up specials. They are so bad. Like Wasn't he has bad. one called the the only reason I've watched one is because he did one called uh called or like comedy for drummers or something, because he's a drummer and he like tried okay. to do this like hybrid like playing drums on stage while I doing like stand up comedy thing. Of that. Fucking terrible. So bad, like not funny and not interesting for drummers at all. Right, it's just tragic. The worst of both worlds. That sounds like it's some kind of weird alt comedy thing, but it's not uh, though. It's so like straightforward and just oh, I like crazy. Okay, anyway, um, about Mario. 
Yeah, Mario, Mario. No, let's keep going. Uh, Wahoo. So then, yeah, what, what got a Mia. chuckle out of me is like, you know, he he beats DK. Again, amazing fight uh, up there. Top 10 anime fights of all time. <laughs> and he, you know, then the crank, he's like, okay, you'll have access to our carts. I love, they go to the garage. I, my brother made a comment about how it was like, uh, it was like the Rebel Alliance in Star Wars. You know, they're all yeah. in the hangar. I was yeah, I love the yeah. cart building sequence. Great. And the you music was like, like, no, no, no. I thought that like the the jumps and explanation of saying that like instead of like having some sort of like in logic, in universe logic of just like, okay, here's what you have to do. Like they just went, why are you standing around? Build your carts. And it's like, that's a like just a very just like jump in like a logical con- like and I feel like they made a lot of those types of just like jumps in dialogue throughout the movie and that it was just very lazy it just felt lazy to be like go ahead build your carts and it's just like they didn't even know that carts were a thing until a second ago like it just well i mean stupid but they're also like the kongs are all very like sort of egotistical and sort of like yeah but blonde. princess peach and so to them they're just like the this same. is normal for us it princess should be normal peach for you. also did the same thing that's what i'm saying is that a complaint that i oh, had okay. was like that they're not explaining things but they're just relying on you as a you know audience to just sort of go like yeah well they would do this or whatever but that that is inherently that. lazy writing server or something <laughs> <laughs> waiting for my drink no i i did like how like the mario kart 8 music plays like dun, 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 yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Yep. and they're like they even have like the same like you know pick your cart your wheels your yeah flyer. yeah that, that was got, like that a, a fun, yeah, me, yeah. you know that was a humorous easter egg um and then they actually you know they get the carts they're racing around they get, and when they get to rainbow road like that was one of my favorite musical cues in the whole movie because it's like the super nes like rainbow road track and it's like one of my favorite like like OST tracks from any game is like yeah, the super yeah. like super Mar- super Mario Kart on Super Nintendo has like one of my favorite soundtracks of any game ever, and that's one of my favorite songs in the game. And it's like hearing that music like in the big theater speakers was so fucking cool. Yeah, watching yeah. them all like you know, a lot of and the yeah, music felt- in general. Again, like not the not the like musical stingers, but like the the score I thought was like very very good. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. yeah, I really enjoyed the way that they used the music. I feel stupid because I probably just straight up missed it or like wasn't conscious of it at the time. But was there any point where they significantly used like the Bob on Battlefield music? I don't remember it at all, actually. I don't remember, I don't, yeah. I don't remember it. That is literally my favorite piece of Mario music. And it it's very never iconic. stuck out to me. <laughs> I mean, hope, the, the, the sequel, sequel. Yeah, that's what I was saying in the car. I'm like, I'm like anything, any well, Easter egg like, they missed, I just go sequel. Yeah, I almost um, consider that song as like synonymous with Mario as the main Mario theme. <laughs> it's definitely up there. Um, they did have King Babam at the end, which I thought oh was like my a god, cool dude, addition. I love that. I love that. And King um, but anyway, there a lot. Oh my god, he was so happy to be there too. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was like you know, the, so I'm at the part here in the movie. I'm watching it again in a tiny window. Um. Wish I could hear it, but I can't because I got to pay attention to the show. Uh, they're all going on Rainbow Road. All the Koopas are racing after them, shooting shells. This was a fun part. You know, again, it felt like the obligatory, we have to acknowledge Mario Kart moment. But also, it wasn't exactly like Mario Kart, which at first I was kind of like, eh. You know, they're shooting like a turret gun and stuff of like banana peels. and Yeah, uh, they, they were loose rockets. with how they implemented like the different mechanics. It was, it felt was like fine. they took... They took like inspiration from uh, Mad Max Free Road. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna make that comparison. Yeah, I really yeah. liked how they had like the the hover car thing where like the wheels would turn. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, like, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. just a nice reference. Where it's like if you play the games, you're just like you you right. know what that is. Um, uh, the only thing I think that really bothered me that I thought they put in kind of not gracefully was when like the one Koopa at the end was just like blue shell and <laughs> exactly I had the same, that's I had the same thought same thing like I had yeah that's sort of what I'm talking about with like the complaints of like you're just okay I had the same thought but like at the same time whatever I'm also at the part like in the movie like one, one of my favorite easter eggs in the whole movie is when he's getting away at first from the blue Koopa and then Mario takes the jump off the side to the extra Rainbow Road thing. And it's like, yep. that is such a deep cut yeah, to that yeah. Mario Kart 64 Rainbow Road. And it's like that unofficial shortcut. And they actually reference that in the movie. I did like yeah, that. I, yeah. I, so, I soyed I, pretty hard at that moment. I soyed so fucking hard <laughs> in my pants. <laughs> All right. Alrighty. Uh, anyways. I mean, my face. Fuck. Even better. 
Yeah. Uh, so then again, blue blue shell, and he throws himself. He <gasps> yeah. kamikazes him. He fucking jihaded just, himself. Yeah, it just felt he, kind of forced. It again, uh, agree, I, agree. I feel You're like forced. you know, again, that's just like a stupid uh. logical whatever. But like the, like I feel like it would have been both time saving and less cringe worthy if there was just a blue shelled Koopa. That they yeah. were like, okay, bring him out, and they fire, and it's like you don't even have yeah. to explain it because we know. Instead, and he of goes like, in a shell and he throws. Yeah, him. the fact that he yeah, just yeah. yells "blue shell" and then yeah, transforms into yeah. a blue I, shell. I just hated those parts of the movie. Yeah, they had to. Kind of, I feel like they kind of had to spell that out a little bit too much, but you know, he gets blasted off, uh, blasting off again, and then him and DK get sent into the ocean. And this was a part like we didn't see in the trailers at all, so this was kind of a f- refreshing moment. I like this a lot. Because when they get saw, eaten oh, by the fish, well, Don't before actually, eel. no, before that, because okay, okay. there is also the fucking double dash reference, like in the like when they're yeah, both like deep, like the, oh, yeah, in the yeah. back of like, yeah, oh my god, so cool. It's like you, it's like they would again, so much fucking love was put into this movie, like referencing multiple Mario Karts so tastefully, you know. Mm-hmm. Them getting eaten by the fish was maybe the weirdest eel. part of the movie Unagi. for me. Was that a reference to something? Yes. Well. Yeah, what? I mean, it was a reference. It was like a, it was a reference to like the eel from Mario sixty four. Okay, which they ended up like bringing back in Mario Odyssey, but he's like has a more realistic design in, in Odyssey, which is what they used in this movie. Josh, do you mean the the eel itself, or like the weird like just interaction just, between Mario and Donkey Kong? The, oh, just was- just the part where they were like, okay, we have to have Mario and I guess Donkey Kong two be kind of like sidelined for a moment. But like the, what they decided so they to do with that, where like okay, they got eaten by a fish and they're in a fish and well, they have an to eel. get out of the fish. And it just felt it's a reference. I don't know, kind of. I mean, it, it just felt random. To, it's a reference to this this um really famous story called Noah and the Whale. I'm just. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reference like it. to it was uh, a, it, Pinocchio. Pinocchio. <laughs> yeah, it, yeah, it wasn't from Pinocchio. any specific. <laughs> it wasn't from any specific game, but I liked it a lot because like we also like saw a lot of the undersea life and there's that part where like uh dk gets hit in the face by the blooper and it's on his face and it's got the same right. expression in the eyes I, I thought that was fun i did think that one of the funnier jokes that did land is when he was like my dad just thinks i'm like some stupid idiot that just crushes things <laughs> and mario's like yeah my dad thinks that i'm a failure too and he's like well your dad's right <laughs> yeah that was funny i actually that was that actually was pretty good. funny yeah i did like that yeah the bonding moment between DK and Mario, I'm like, I didn't Are, know I needed this, but yeah. it's like, oh, we're both fail sons. So if they're not exactly, fail sons, yeah. he's like, but you are though. I thought that, that yeah, was yeah, effective. so great. Um, let me just so then yeah, that part, you know, all the cool. All, I liked all the little Koopa clown cars that pop up, and they 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 they're capturing all of the like the Kongs and uh, right. everybody, and they're all in the same like lava prison with Luigi, who we don't see for a bit. And then there's like the Luma from Mario Galaxy. I thought it was a nice right. um, Easter egg. I thought the character's a little bit annoying, but they way overdid it. The, the, like agreed. again, like in terms of like the like the screen time of some things versus an o- other things, and feeling like it's too condensed and what like oh this it's too like bloated or it's too not enough or too much or whatever. Like those were the parts where it's like you could have added that character for a second. And cut it out completely and, like, added a couple more things, you know, like, in terms of, like, the economy of shit. I kind of liked it. I, I guess Shut I really up, agree wrong. that they overdid it a little, but... They did know, overdo it. From, like, it. a kid's movie much. perspective, like, I thought it was funny that they were like, hey, yeah. here's this nihilistic suicidal oh, you think, you character. Think that children need to... Children yeah. need more suicidal ideation in this children country. Will you find think that, that the problem in this country is that children think don't have enough suicidal ideation. For- I think dark comedy for children is underrated. And also they need, like it. They need to grow up. The world, world it was is a little edge lordy. And- it was a little edge lordy. You're an edge for adults, but for like children, like I don't know. Like how many movies I was, do sitting stuff there squirming like that? in my seat. Oh boy. I don't know. It just wasn't I'm not it saying wasn't it was amazing. Funny. <laughs> it wasn't <laughs> funny. It just didn't serve any purpose for me. I thought it But can I give sucked. I want to give a shout out to the penguins oh, though? It was a little funny. We, we, we've kind of over that. The I fucking penguins. love the penguins. They're so cute. The opening scene, you know, we've all I've, we've all seen the trailer before. Like that was like, yeah. you know, th- that part of the movie. I was like, well, I've already seen this part. You know, it's yeah, kind of waiting for it to be over. Little, but it's also a yeah. really enjoyable part. And then seeing them later on in like the cage and stuff, like the yeah, king penguin, yeah. who's like, "This is depressing." 
Yeah, but like the first five minutes or so of the movie was everything we had already seen from the trailers. Like we had seen that yeah. entire Bowser Penguin yeah. sequence, and then we had already seen the commercial. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that was kind of weird how like everything there was just like, oh, I've already seen this. Yeah. Well, that's movie trailers for you. But, you know, that being said, you know, after that, they get out of the whale. Uh, DK uses his uh, uh, part of the cart to blast out of there, which I'm like, is this a fucking reference to DK Barrel Blast, the game that nobody likes on the Wii? <laughs> or just Donkey Maybe. Kong Country, I guess, sort of. Well, I guess that's not true. really. I guess yeah, you shoot between got, barrels, but you don't yeah. buy a barrel. Yeah. So then after that, we, we cut to the, the wedding is happening because Peach agrees to marry Bowser because we also miss this part. Uh, Bowser is like... Or, he Kamek is using magic to like torture Toad, and he's like, yeah. it looks like he's like breaking his bones and like with magic. And it was like this is kind of like disturbing, you know? Like he was in like like Toad is such a jo- joyous character, and he was so like viscerally in pain during that scene. Mm-hmm. No, maybe it was like no, don't hurt him. He's just like a little mushroom guy. I know he's it was, just it was an upsetting to watch. Man. So can you blame Peach? You know she she was like all right, fine. She marries him, and she's got you know she's got something up her sleeve, but. She goes to the wedding. Um, hey, might as well call it the red wedding, right, guys? Because how, how crazy this was. Yeah. Um, and then, it was like a white because they're wearing white. Well, well, they weren't. Were they were they wearing red at the red wedding, or was it just due to the blood? I think because blood. of the blood. Yeah. So my joke actually makes sense. Oh well, my joke also makes sense, just in a different way. No, your joke was a lava. nitpick. Well, anyways. Yes, they're at the wedding, and Bowser's decked out in his Mario Odyssey wedding outfit. Charming. Gotta love that. Yeah, you it was know, good. very it was charming. I love. We said King Bob Om was there. He sits on the Koopa shell. One of the best gags in the movie. King <laughs> Boo's there as well. King Bob Om. Um. Yeah, King Bob. Did I say Bomb Bomb? Fuck. No, you said so Bob like, Cut that out. You said it fine. I'm just being okay. I was <laughs> just being a little guy. shit. And he also falls asleep during the wedding. You know, he's like he's bored. You know, couldn't be me. Well, it was also weird too because he fell asleep like in the middle of the action. Because like, yeah, there was yeah, a yeah. part where like he was like part of the group that was storming the stage, and then like later, like he was asleep, and it was like so you didn't Maybe fall asleep narcolepsy. during the wedding. You... Did you ever think of Maybe. that? Yeah, ableist much? Yeah, 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 yeah. I am. So then, so, um, Peach, are you a- hides... are you ableist against me? Who's an ableizer? Is that sure? Sure. I think Are you so. doing your own form of bigotry? Yes. Possibly? I'm not I'm not actually 100% sure, but I the think Reverse so. Uno card. Yes. So then um, Toad hands uh, Peach her bouquet. We all know there's probably a gun or something in there, but <laughs> she has the bouquet and it's a uh, it's an ice flower. Ooh, that's a nice power up. We haven't seen that in the movie yet. And she gets the ice flower. She's shooting ice balls at everything. And this is a cool moment for Peach because like it let Mario kind of do his own thing and be useful and have his big adventure. And this is a moment for Peach to not. She is a damsel in distress, but she also has this moment that wasn't too kind of cringy girl bossy, you know, mm-hmm. entertaining enough. Yeah. And um, Mario. Toad did and- make that joke, though, where he said, uh, that's how you princess. And it's like, okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, OK, yeah, do a little <laughs> of that. Yeah. that. Yeah. I, I didn't hate it either. Like, it could it have been. Fine. I don't know. It was Whatever. It's just we need to have our audience know that well, well, we don't we don't agree with regressive sexist stereotypes. We're self aware. Yeah. That's like hey, how not, come this is a this is this is not that big. You could have yeah. just did how it and not announced it. She's a princess and not a queen. That bothered that's a very good me. That, that's a yeah, very that was good we, yeah, that was weird. They made yeah that maybe because she's like, not married. We also glossed over really quick. If this the movie Lord, was really feminist. They would have made her queen peach. Well, okay. remember the lore dump where we find out that like <laughs> Peach is like, I'm not from here. Yeah. yeah. And then made me like their princess. And I'm like, OK, well, where is she from? We still don't know. But they hint that she came out of a pipe from somewhere, maybe Brooklyn. Maybe <laughs> Literally, it was. it was just like like some shitty parents who who like d- lost didn't, their kid, <laughs> just threw her into the sewer. <laughs> no, we don't. We don't really know. We have no <laughs> explanation. She could sewer. not be Flushed from her down the toilet. She could be not <laughs> from Lindbergh, Earth. Baby. <laughs> so then, um, you know, anyway, there the wedding's happening, and we get this amazing sequence, probably the best in the whole movie, of DK and Mario like running through all the enemies and yeah, that was fun. And that was like one of my favorite parts. And like, mm-hmm. dude, like the musical cues, like they the, when they they play the athletic theme from like Mario World, yeah. and I'm not afraid to say it, dude, I got full body goosebumps in that moment. And then they play the fucking like Mario three athletic theme when he gets a Tanuki suit and he's jump- he's flying around. I'm like, oh, this is like, why am I enjoying this so much? That was good. It was a good part. It was good because it was visually well done. 
Yeah, it was. It was like this fun. is how I felt like in the Sonic in Sonic Two, and like I'm like, is he gonna go Super Sonic here? <laughs> Hell yeah! Like brother. it was just, it was the same fucking feel, but like times ten, and like D- Fire DK, they oh he can do that, <laughs> you know? Oh, they they do that. Illumination, they can do, do that. Movie. <laughs> yeah. It was like DK. <laughs> Yeah, DK never, you know, he didn't really, because power-ups are not a DK thing. So seeing DK, you get the fire flower and throwing fireballs, and they're running around jumping on the Goombas and everything. So fucking sick. So sick. And then if that wasn't good enough, we cut back to the wedding, and Peach throws a fucking fireball at King bob and he's freaking out. I kind of feel bad, because I actually got the scene open here now. He looks, like, sad as he's about to die. Like, very sad. Yeah. You know, his whole expression becomes very dour. Down with the... Patriarchy. Yeah. <laughs> Kill. I don't. Yeah. Know. Fucking, you know, kings got to stand together, I guess. And yeah. where was King Boo during that exchange? He just sort of disappeared as he's known to do. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> well, we'll see him in the sequel. Yeah. I hope. Or the fucking spinoff, dude. Oh, we didn't see any the HBO boos, series did spinoff. Well, did we see did, I don't, I, don't know. I, I feel like. Did we? I not, well, know. certainly no, none in the theater. I didn't hear any. But in the movie, <laughs> I didn't. I don't think I recalled any, any boos. No. We got the uh, the skeleton uh, Koopas or whatever bones. the fuck they're called. Yeah. Oh, love that. Love that. Uh, yeah, that was great. Yeah, there was also called- like another fun gag where he like uh, like knocks one of the dry bones down and then it just like builds back up and he's like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, I can't believe he said that too. What the fuck? Yeah. Yeah. What the- I'm like, little, see, this movie isn't for babies. Weird. Yeah. Did, wait, did, was, weird. I don't remember him saying the F word, but I did, did. think he, that in yeah, the no, final Josh, sequence that Bowser said, oh, shit. And I was like, yeah. wait, he just wait, said shit? Honestly. Hold on. Now I'm confused. I do have this as like a- I don't uh, believe that Luigi said the F word. No, no way. he didn't. I, he didn't. I, I He's do kidding. Have, I do he have did? a gripe. No, this God is God. not. This is not so worth Nico pursuing anymore. Nico is saying um, that he did, but Kevin is saying that he didn't. No, I, I, we, I will me, say me and Nico are both of, yes and in Grant's joke, and then I, I it seemed to confuse you too much, so then I bailed on the bit, and then now you're like saying like debating. Nico, stop, saying, yes, like stop, <laughs> stop. Uh, I will say in terms of like adult theme jokes that like one that they could have that I was kind of disappointed that they didn't is that when they were throwing Bowser at the end of the movie. No one said so long, gay Bowser. It oh. would have been great to just leave in that little bit of like ambiguity of he just goes so long, Bowser. You know, like something like that, where it's just like they know, you know. And but he's I like, feel like they I'm don't want to. <laughs> so long, bisexual Bowser. You know, that would have been great. That would have been the Easter egg. That I agree. I would want. I, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah, I wish that they had been, pla- I do just even wish physically they had played up that spin a little bit, like let the spin go uh, on a little longer. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, little I, longer, I, yeah, I agree. But it was still fun seeing that they got rid of him by spin throwing him. Yeah. Like, was a fun. Also, I think we can all agree on this. And like, I was so fucking thankful that this didn't happen. That when Mario first took the mushroom, he wasn't like, dude, where am I? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, know, I like, think about that, that but that would have sucked. <laughs> but like there was a part like for a second I was like sh- I was about to like f- I'm like oh my god I was like, shivering in my seat because when he does get the mushroom and he looks down at his hand and it is kind of blurry and glowing I'm like no please don't 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 but then it ended up just turning into him getting big yeah yeah they could have so easily done them oh, dude mushrooms are crazy man oh it's What's also a this? children's movie and the endorsement of like psychologically you know like uh, uh psychedelic drugs like mm-hmm. would be like a very strange reference. i i know it, but like you know it's it would be like a nod to all the classic newgrounds flash animations from 20 or years ago or just the adults and we all know, watching we with all, their children you know yeah I don't think kids are th- those get people that. yeah Huh, I don't think I saw any of those in our crowd, though. Weird. Oh, yeah. I wanted, <laughs> I wanted to say uh, actually, about... I, one. I wanted to say about Mario's character that I liked that they made a bit... I didn't super like how they implemented it, but the fact that they made an important part of his character be that he doesn't give up. Like, that he, yes. like... Yeah. Keeps trying to... Because that, to me, felt like a game reference in itself where it's like yeah, it was a like big a big part of the games is yeah. you just keep trying and you die and it's like trial and error so like that felt like a yeah. nice way to like make that a character trait for him i didn't necessarily love the way they like called it out uh i felt like they could have done that better where like at the end like they're just like you just don't give up and he's like yeah i've been told that it's like eh, you could have done that well a no i think he was referring to like spike 
I think he's referring to Spike in the beginning of the movie. Yeah. Well, yeah. also, well, also, uh, Peach says it to him after the Donkey Kong fight. It's like a recurring so, theme, oh, okay. yeah, which yeah. again, um, it makes sense, but it is one of those things where, yeah, I don't know. I, th- I, I would have liked. Baby, I, oh, sorry. No, it's okay. Go ahead. I was gonna just say before I forget. I thought Baby Luigi was cute, and so was Baby Mario. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. We, like we already did. Sequence. We already did say that. We talked about oh, well, them already. I don't remember. I it, so. I, and they were they were adorable. They were very they were very adorable. adorable. But yeah, I would have I, liked Nico. If, how much are you? How much were you like? Oh my god, prequel, please. Yeah, I was thinking <laughs> that the entire time with Yoshi. Actually, okay, so my boyfriend was like telling me the entire time. He was like, he's like, I'm so mad. Where's the Yoshi? Where's the Yoshi? And I'm like, I'm more mad that, that there's no Yoshi than you are. It's like I'm. Just, I'm like, yeah, you're being such an empath. <laughs> I'm just, Dude, and I know, like, in, in, I'm in the car on the way to the movie. My brother was like. How much you want to bet the end credits like post like the Easter you know the Easter egg at the end of the movie is going to be an egg of Yoshi, <laughs> and I remember like, I I turned around and saw him and he just was like pointing at the screen. <laughs> so I um, thought that oh are we still going? Well, no, I guess I I didn't mean to jump to the end of the movie because like I'm I'm still watching it here. I mean, and I'm, almost, I'm almost through the whole movie right now. <laughs> oh, I just wanted to say one more thing about my thing it was just that um when they're doing the obstacle course with Peach, I would have appreciated if like because at the end of that. He's like, but I didn't. She's like, yeah, you're you're coming with me. And he's like, why? I didn't finish it. And she's just like, yeah, but you almost did. I would have liked if she had like said something maybe like, yeah, but the fact that you like kept trying and didn't give up is what's important or something. Yeah, didn't you just say like, you didn't like that they kept saying that though. No, but I but I I would have I liked think that, that there's more type useful of inclusion ways of, it of more like than the yeah. No, that. I'm I'm with Josh on that. I think that there's like better and worse ways to like write those types of things in. You okay. know, and to just like it. reference it like out of context. Like, I think that that's the big thing is that like if there was like a little more contextualization of some of these quotes and of some mm-hmm. of these ideas and if they repurposed them just a little better to just like make the writing feel more just down to earth and grounded and, instead dude, of just of, like just throw out that quote just somewhere in the movie. It would have felt right. better there, you know. I speaking did of, still though, like that interaction between Peach and Mario, though, because... It's kind of funny too because yeah. they, it's almost was like an interaction between two gamers where she was like, where he was like, <laughs> "You got it on your first try, didn't you?" And she's like, "Yeah, but I grew up here." And it kind of feels like someone like like having someone play Mario for the first time. Ah, They're like, "Yeah, yeah but I yeah, grew yeah. up playing these games." Okay, so. that's actually a, that's a really interesting read, and I actually I like that a lot. I yeah, like that too. And like you know, there's a lot of moments we're talking about parts we liked. There's so there's so many moments I can think of like how this could have been so much worse. Another yeah, one for yeah. that sequence is like, and she's like, "Don't worry, we got plenty of these." And she pulls out like a green one up mushroom or something. Thank God that wasn't there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would have been cringy because it was like it was less of like, "Oh, Mario dies, he comes back, he dies, he comes back." It was like, no, he just keeps, he doesn't give up. It was more of like a indomitable spirit thing as opposed to like, yeah, yeah, yeah. video game reference one up, and it wasn't that. Thank yeah, God. You yeah. know what I mean? I agree with that. So then they're at the wedding. Bowser is like getting cucked hardcore. He's getting angry. He's still encased in ice and he gets so heated up. He breaks out and then he shoots out. Well, okay. He shoots out what was a bonsai bill, but he incorrectly calls it a bomber bill in the movie. Yeah. I, I have a funny feeling. I know why. Because they don't want to have the uh, kamikaze association. I'm like, bonsai! You know? Yeah, it's... I, I mean, maybe... I don't there know. Maybe I'm reading into it too sort much. sort of talk behind the scenes. I mean, again, you don't know like what they're saying. Like, you know, like you were saying about like Bowser doesn't cross his legs like this. He doesn't drink his coffee like this, like that sort of thing of like, yeah, we don't use this Nintendo terminology, it, you know. It feels like it would be weird for Nintendo to not notice that. So maybe they want yeah, to it, yeah. change the name. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, Also, I so then like he shoots him around. Mario's like chasing him, like he's leading him astray with he's got the Tanuki suit on. And I thought it was funny when Luigi's like, bro, why do you look like a bear? You know, yeah, nobody yeah. got it right. Somebody else said he looked like a raccoon or something, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, dude, though, though he did well, I was disappointed that Mario didn't correct anybody. Though I guess he wouldn't know what it is either, right. you know. Mm-hmm. But then I love that he's like leading him away from the from the chase, and then he even like t- like they're at Peach's castle, and it was like in melee that that stage of like you know, and like there's a giant bullet bill that's like yeah, approaching the castle that is from right. yeah, and then and then he get he starts flying him away further because he and he hits. I like that like he just hits him. He spins and hits him with his tail, and and like he gets all pissed off and stuff. It was actually, he was actually kind of intimidating, you know? It was yeah, like, uh, yeah. it reminded me of uh, the fucking, um, 
uh, Brave Little Toaster, that giant magnet, you know, when they're in the junkyard. Mm-hmm. And he's like got those like death eyes like chasing him down. Um, so then Mario has the bright idea. He flies past the pipe that he came in from Brooklyn. And I thought this scene was a little bit insensitive because Mario's flying him by and he leads the bullet bill through the pipe to New York and the fucking twin towers explode again. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was like, whoa. Like, I'm like, what? <laughs> I was, I was like, thinking, why do they put like, that in here? Is that pipe or is that bullet bill just going to go straight to to Brooklyn? <laughs> yeah, yeah like he and, leads uh, a giant fucking like explosive like aircraft to New York. Yeah, smart right. move, Einstein. I know. Can't believe they went there though. Kind of. Brilliant. I know. I know. But the, the effect it does is, have is it like yeah. kind of like blows up the whole like like connection between worlds and causes yeah, them yeah. to like collide. Which I also thought was, like, effective because it's sort of, like, bringing it all back around circular that it's, like, mm -hmm. oh, well, now we're in, like, the real world sort of thing. And, like, oh, Mario, who's been a loser up until this point in the movie, like, it's, like, oh, the entire city gets to see him, like, save Brooklyn or whatever. And that was, I thought, like, a a cool, effective, you know. I didn't expect that. I didn't expect him to go back for the final battle, but I liked it. I liked it. Yeah. Also, I just realized this movie is like the opposite of the Sonic movie. Yeah. Starts yeah. in the real world, goes to fantasy, ends in this. Sonic is like the literal opposite. Starts in fantasy, goes to real world, and then there's like a thing at the end briefly where it's the fantasy world again, you know? Right. Mm-hmm. What if Brooklyn Which, becomes New Donk City? Well, I don't dude, think and I, I had, you know what, Josh? I had a theory about that because it's like, you know, one thing I was kind of confused about because I went up before I saw the movie, I'm like, or the trailers even, I was like, maybe mario and donkey kong know each other from brooklyn because they used to be rivals and stuff and i'm like well that didn't happen but you know dk's in brooklyn at the end of the movie i was expecting a post credit scene where he's like oh i kind of like it here i think i'm gonna stay yeah. <laughs> well let's sorry, say that, maybe I, that was peter griffin a- i'm sorry <laughs> <back in time. laughs> i think i'm gonna stay <laughs> alone <laughs> maybe we if went, there had been went, like, an is. hour and a half without a family guy reference i think we deserve like a little pat uh, on the back yeah, it's uh, like an alcoholic. It's like uh, you've made it three months sobriety. Have a beer. Congratulations. Yeah, maybe maybe if yeah. Bowser had like destroyed <laughs> the like the Kong world, and then it would be like, well, they need to resettle, and now like sort of these worlds have sort of merged a little bit. Uh, I, I hate and you that. could also make it where like this version of Brooklyn is not necessarily like the same real world Brooklyn. It's like no, it's definitely the real world. <laughs> Though uh, our friend Danny, after the movie, pointed out that they never do, they never call it New York, though. They just say Brooklyn. Yeah. Which I think, you know, so, like, yeah, makes it that it's kind of like its own thing where it's just like, it's a city called Brooklyn that is like a fantasy version of it. The Queens also yeah, maybe it's, it's, isn't, uh, it's maybe a borough isn't connected to in the New rest Donk. of like Earth. And it's like, as we all know in Mario Odyssey, the Mushroom Kingdom and New Donk City exist on the same planet, just in different locations, so not exactly different universes. Could we do more uh, like the movie? <laughs> right, but, it, but maybe sorry, at the sorry. end of this movie, they have like mer- the universes of merged, I don't, so they become they'll, the same universe. They'll figure it out in the writer's room, and I'll complain about it. <laughs> also, I'm, si- I'm sitting here watching the final fight of this movie with Mario and Bowser in the streets of Brooklyn. So cool, right? So cool. I thought it was cool. I I will say like another sort of like plot hole for me was just like at the end it's like okay Mario's sort of like struggling in his fight with Bowser. Luigi shows up and he's like don't worry I got you brother like you know so long as we're together we're fine. They get the star and then it's like oh, Dude, I was emotional s- at that part. It was, like, it, was it was cool. It was cool. But the thing that like sort of bugged me a little bit l- tiny little gripe is we saw Mario do this training sequence at the beginning. And Mario gets good at the run, jump, you know, all that stuff. And then just like at the end, Luigi just like also is good at, you know, I get a little bit of, uh, oh, he has the star or whatever, but it's like. He has a star. He has a star. Okay. Okay. Fair, that's fair, just fair. like, but why, but like he how had can to, he run, jump? He's same actually, as Mario. Grant, I, I noticed something very interesting upon my second viewing in mute here right now. So there is a scene when they're fixing the, the the bathroom in the beginning of the movie. Remember, and like the they break the faucet, yeah, and it sprays all the water out. And Luigi grabs the mirror off the wall and he's like holding it like a shield to stop mm. the water. Oh. Right. I saw that, and then like remember the end of the movie where he grabs the fucking sewer grate and he's using yeah, it as a yeah. shield against the fire. You know, right. So that's good. That part was cool. I was that was an amazing Luigi moment. I love that. Like you know, he's yeah, like almost, great. I like yeah. when Luigi gets a W. Ma- yeah. I'm in Luigi W. I like this the the end scene. It did like 
start to feel a little rushed to me where they were like, we really have to get this like climactic battle over with so that we can yeah. keep this movie to like an hour and a half. Right. A little bit, but again, that I, I, I was fine with it. I felt like it was an appropriate length to me. Yeah. And yeah. like, it, it was like, the, it was like the Donkey Kong and Mario fight earlier, but like amped up. And I'm even watching it now. I'm like, it's just even like disturbing to see like Bowser just beating the shit out of like Donkey Kong in the streets. Because it, it just feels so more visceral because like it's just this animated thing. And like the characters, and I don't know if we really touched on this much, but like something so unique about the movie is I love seeing how expressive all the characters are. Because it's like, you know, in the games, Mario's like, woohoo, yippee. And he might be, might be sad if he loses a race or something. But yeah, yeah. all their like facial expressions and like seeing Mario have a full range of emotions and even speak felt like on paper I would be like no don't ever do that right. this movie I there felt was the same way. <laughs> there were aspects of it too though where like yeah Mario is very expressive and emotive and I I like I I will say that like your your general idea of like who this character is is usually one of like happy go lucky you know carefree sort of like but like determined and like you know like that there's all this thing but like that that he's like it, it at the bottom line of it all that he's like this good guy and I, I almost feel like from like this movie's interpretation that like he was maybe more a little cynical than I can like not cynical I, I don't even feel like that's like the right word because like there was that like determination and like he never gives up or whatever mm-hmm. I, I almost wish that he was like outwardly a little happier at times or he was just like Let's go, you know, like that's just the, that thing where he was just like encapsulating like the carefree nature of Mario a little more instead of this guy that's just like confused and bewildered and perplexed and, you know, like, oh, what's this? You know, like, I don't, I don't know. It just felt not 100 percent within the character, but also that like you can't do that for the entire movie. But I just wish that I got little more glimpses of like him being like happy you know i i, I don't know how to phrase you know that what, better. Grant, that's a good point you know i remember like when we were like really really little like my brother used to just call mario happy He's yeah like, oh it's happy because <laughs> like he just always looks happy you know yeah, he's always he, smiling and like yeah he there are moments where he's like serious and determined and stuff like that but like you know you watch him interact with like you know in the games and stuff like that like when he's interacting with uh like Alden Delfino Island when he's interacting mm-hmm. with certain people or you know certain characters and certain things like that it's just like he always has this like smile on his face and he's yeah, always yeah. just like okay let's go you know that sort of thing where it's just like this positivity and i didn't really feel like this mario was like that uh, like there was like the positive undertones but he didn't feel like positive happy-go-lucky smiley sort of thing and i i just mm-hmm. wish that i got like a little more of that i don't i kind of I I agree just I, like I, a, I actually kind of agree with that yeah. yeah there was there was like a bit of cognitive dissonance with it where it was inter- i was thinking about it like at the very beginning of the movie like the scene where after the dinner scene where mario's in his bedroom and then luigi comes up and they're just kind of like commiserating and i was thinking like this is not a mario that i know like, this is not a version of Mario that, like, they're not doing, like, a Mario that is super recognizable to video game fans. But I was also, at the same time, thinking, like, I don't dislike this version of Mario. It wasn't, and, like, like, terrible. Th- I just wanted, like, a little he, more from it. I was just happy that, like, they gave them character at all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. like, I, yeah. I was almost afraid that they were going to be really shallow, like... Cut I'm yeah. not saying there they were, were definitely super deep some or depth, anything, yeah. but uh, like I would say, yeah. like in a, in a weird way, like I feel like this movie almost like gave the I know it's like not connected, but this almost like gave the games a little bit more of like an oomph in a weird way. Just like in the games, we don't need to hear them talk and stuff that much, right, but it's right. like seeing this other side. It was like actually I, I appreciated it quite a bit. And I want to mention because I'm at the I'm at the fight scene still right now, but you know what scene went so fucking hard. Is what? when they get that they first get the uh, the power star and they're both standing there like this and then Bowser like punches it's like something yeah, out of like yeah. an anime and like, yeah, he like exactly. punches yeah, him yeah. and then he punches him and they're just like this like they take the hit <laughs> and then just behind them they're just this boom this yeah, massive yeah. impact I was like this is too cool like it was yeah. cool this is too- and then like the music also 
like yeah, yeah it, it dun, felt dun, perfect dun, 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 yeah. and then they even see like mario's parents and then like they're like whoo they're from the window and stuff and then they get eaten by a piranha plant for a second and they bust out yeah also didn't click for me to uh, until today and i posted this in the discord but mario's dad's design is straight up ripped from zelda ocarina of time yeah. oh okay remember malin the guy like there's yeah, like, the guy yeah. who's supposed to look like mario and he's got that mustache beard yeah combo that makes sense bald. yeah that is yeah. mario's dad in this movie Cool. That's so is it? Yeah. There's not really much else in the movie to talk about, really. Should we just go um, to ratings? We're at an hour and a half. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm just, I just, just go so wrap up a little. <laughs> Let's just say I'm at the end of the movie. So then sure. there's Mr. Blue Sky plays by ELO. Mario and Luigi set up shop in the Mushroom Kingdom, and they're hopping around. They're having. A oh, good you time. forgot the last thing. They they um they have Bowser eat like the little the the the, the one yeah. mushroom, mushroom that makes you small, and they put him in the cum jar. Yeah. I, <laughs> I was gonna say I didn't right, like yeah. that that much, but now that you mention it that way, I, okay, he, yeah, he deserves now, it. now it's good actually, yeah. <laughs> In the post credit scene where like somebody was like sitting over it, <laughs> yeah, they're just ejaculating on him. That's it. I like. It'll be Nico, very I love, easy that was for a great... Bowser to get out of this because all he has to do is like get hurt once. Well, did you like when like Wario was like uh, like crouching over the jar? And like, right, right. Was like, no, no. <laughs> yeah. I can't believe I was like, they went there, but, but this was for the adults in the audience. Yeah, yeah. We like, we get it, you know? Yeah. We get it. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. The, and then, of course, the end credit sequence with Yoshi and he, you hear the little, I fucking I'm like, soyed so hard. I was like, that's what I needed. I, yeah, there was, yeah. there was one scene where you see a pack of Yoshis running. I'm like, this better I not know. be it. This better not be it. But then at the very, very end, it was Yoshi. And I was like, hell yeah, sequel, I, babe. I think Grant agrees with me on this that I kind of find this to be the weakest type of post credit sequel. Like, yeah, I thing. hate I do. Which is just, I usually let's do. just zoom in on a thing. It feels very much like the end of Sonic 2 with like Shadow, and it's just like. Dude, you like Marvel movies. What the fuck are you talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, they'll really have a set little they'll actually set up like a plot thing. Like, this is yeah, literally just. Shit here's no one cares an image about. of a thing. <laughs> yeah, no one gives a shit about fucking. I'm not Aunt saying those are anything. I'm not saying. People that's care not about stupid. Yoshi, that, oh, I'm not saying ears. that's not stupid. I'm just saying this is even stupider than that. Yeah, but Yoshi's better than Ant because at least that's or whatever yeah. Marvel Aunt shit. Butthole. Like, yes, it's like oh, here's some superhero. fucking wa- like Wonder Bitch or whatever. I don't know Marvel shit, so I'm just making shit up. Here's I guess. Wonder Bitch. Wonder don't get me wrong. I love Yoshi, and I, I in but like I would never don't. even Put doubted that Yoshi would be in a sequel. Like you don't love Yoshi, or else you wouldn't be fucking complaining. And they already. Show no the one is, no, in this no movie. one no one loves Yoshi more than me in this call. We can agree to this, right? We had already yes. gotten to see actual Yoshis. Yeah, though, but not in enough. The movie. <laughs> not enough. It wasn't enough. I needed more. Okay. I'll agree it should have been a little bit more of an e- thing at the end, but whatever, man. Okay, listen, a review time. We, yeah. we all want to wrap this up. Grant's gotta go somewhere. It's fucking Easter. We got shit yeah. to do. Um I don't, no, I'm I I I don't. Well, I, I do have actually stuff to do, but I. I okay. I, where do I begin? I think it's pretty clear. I like the movie. <laughs> uh, I actually liked it quite a lot. You know what? Fuck it, man. I loved this movie. I can't believe <laughs> yeah, I'm brother. saying it, dude. I loved this fucking movie. I had, this was like one of the fucking most fun theater experiences I've had in my whole life. Seeing with all my friends, there was the, all the Japanese ads beforehand. We were ordering food. Like when the pizza and beer came out partway into the movie, I was like, this is like, I'm having a really fucking good time, you know? And all like, we we're just like, you know, we're when laughing I was on the in all toilet the parts. afterwards. Yeah, I yeah, love that great. part. I love when Josh, or no, I like when Grant got diarrhea at the end. Was, that was, a, that was a, a little, there's your fucking Easter egg at the end. Yeah, I got a fucking Easter egg for you. <laughs> My butt. <laughs> and uh, just, I don't know, man. I the, it, it, People complain that the plot went like, th- this was an incoherent plot. It was like, it went like a mile a minute. I'm like, did, was it though? It wasn't I incoherent. Like I just Dude, like, no. it was very. No, it was very, pretty fast. Yeah, it was Pretty like fast basic. Paced. It was a fast paced. It was fast paced, but I didn't mind though. I didn't mind. I didn't mind either. I didn't mind, and like everything looked so good from like the details and like the characters to like the cloaks and the shy guys. Like everything was so perfect, and um, an amalgamation of like not just like one Mario game, but fucking like nearly forty years worth of Mario games to a movie that you know was essentially a kids movie, but. There was enough there for everybody to enjoy, just like the games. Yeah. Um, 
I am putting this in the library and I'm actually putting it like maybe he's oh starting a God. new shelf and putting it at the top of that <laughs> shelf. No, it gets its I, own I, shelf. It gets its own display. I am putting it like not in the tippy top, but like a little below that, you know, because obviously it's like as a movie, there's a fucking lot of movies I like more than this, obviously. Yeah. But like I had so much fun at this movie. And thank you again to Shruggernaut for, you know, helping yeah. make this possible. And thank you guys for listening. Because if you're listening, you donated to us and that helps yeah. the show. Yeah. Grant, um, send us that money. <laughs> I will. We're waiting for well, it. Well, I also have to I have to like put it into my bank account and then once okay. it's in the bank account, then I have to like uh like I have to transfer it to Pay a different me. bank account and then you'll get then your money. It, but uh <laughs> you'll never get your money. You'll never see it. But um, anyway, yeah, that's my review. Yeah. It's going in the library fair fairly fairly high up. I'm gonna give my review and then I gotta bounce after that. So I'm gonna like hang up the call and everything. Um okay, bye. but we'll make uh, it well okay. Well can we go like five minutes like we'll all go quick? I no I, I don't let, think Grant, I can, let Grant talk and we can continue I, talking. I have a pretty hard out it too. Um okay. I'll just I'll give my review and then y'all can just wrap up the episode. Um, okay. uh, my review, I I agree with everything that Kevin said. I just I wish that like I wish it wasn't so babyified. Like I I realize yeah it's a movie for kids or whatever, but it's also like some of the, like I just, I felt like the writing at times was just like sloppy. And I get that it's like well it's a it's a Mario movie like and there's no plot of Mario games so like you know, what you got is like more than they've done. And it's like, I get that, but it's also a different medium and it's a yeah. movie. And like uh, the, the point that I was making with like the, uh, the detective Pikachu movie is that like video game movies do not have to be bad. And I think that we have enough like interpretations of these types of things into cinema where it's like, you know how to do it bad and you know how to do it good. And I think that it was closer to good than to bad, but like mm-hmm. a lot of the like, you know just like jumpiness without explanation it's like they could have they could have did a little more they could have elevated a little more and i i hate for that to like ruin my experience of like you know uh like because i do think that i liked it and i there was like that like positive aspect but i just wanted like a little more from it just in terms of like technicality and there were just those little moments where things did bug me. And I felt like I, I laughed at a lot more things because I thought that they were stupid than that they were generally clever. They're genuinely clever. And I did think that there were a lot of like genuinely clever like bits, especially some of like the the physical, like again, like the pipe bit, I think was like one of my favorite uh, things, like the logic of like jumping into the wrong pipe and trying to figure out which one's the right pipe. Like I liked that and I liked so much of that type of thing. But also, like, yeah, it was very just like very heavily Americanized type humor that just felt like it was like trying mm. to, you know, serve like the lowest common denominator of people that just like, you know, clap at like really dumb jokes sort of thing. And like, you know, I don't know. But despite all that, I mean, I, I still think that it was good. It was I think it was way better than the Sonic movie. Um, and just like so many other things. And I, I, I do agree with Kevin that there was like a lot of like heart and soul and interest put in it. I just wish that that was like maybe a little more reflected in like the script and the storytelling sort of aspects instead of just like the references and stuff like that. Like if they would have paid a little more attention to the detail and the plot and stuff like that, that it was just like, I feel like it could have been a lot better and I'm almost sort of disappointed that it wasn't a lot better, but it was still like good for what we got. And so I don't want to like nitpick and complain, but it just was sort of like a a glass half full for me sort of thing, you know? It sounds like it. Yeah. Uh, Um, So where are you putting it? um, I would say in the library, maybe bottom middle shelf. I I was worried. Grant, I was so worried you wouldn't like it. No. I'm glad to hear that you enjoyed it. Maybe not just me, but like, I'm glad that you had a good time. Yeah, no, it was fun. Like, it's it's hard not to have fun with this type of thing. I just wish that like maybe a different... I think the visuals were good, but like maybe if a different studio had done it, maybe it would have been a little better, but maybe it wouldn't have been as good. So I I don't know. You know, you take what you can get. Hard to say. Anyway. All right. I'm uh, going to pop off the call. All right. Well, yeah, just uh, I guess end your recording and send it over and... Get out yes, of pu- here. Puppy out. We'll get this puppy out soon. Yeah, we're going to talk yep. some shit about you. Anyway. Cool. Uh, can, can see you. Good next? luck. Uh, hey. See you, fire bros. All right. Hey. See you. Well, I'll see you, on the, I'll see you on the other side or this side. You won't see me on the other side.
Okay. You won't be seeing me there. I'll, well, have, I'll have be a great right Easter. here. Okay. Have yeah. a great yeah. Easter. Easter uh, ho- happy See Easter. Space firefighter. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. Uh, All who right, wants so to go next? Me. me. <laughs> I thought it was good. I thought it was cute. Even though this is a movie for babies, sometimes I have baby tendencies, and this like hit all the baby tendencies for me. So. I feel like you know, I don't know. It didn't like it didn't personally feel that babyish to me because like I, I, I feel the same way, Kevin. <laughs> I just say I, you baby guys as like that, a way but... to be cute. I'm but like saying, I don't know, it, like I, I was I just, like I've seen it to be more babyish, and it, like I've seen so many other because even my brother was talking after the movie how it was like almost weird to hear them say kill and die so much in the movie, which is like they, a lot of people did die too. All those carts exploding in like very fiery, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even when they were like just driving through Kong Island, and that one guy just like flips out and just like explodes. I was okay, like, but yeah, that was unnecessary. Here, here's what I mean by baby movie. I call. All Star Wars and Marvel movies, baby movies as well. So like, okay. So maybe adult baby movie is what I'm trying to get at. Um, but I liked it. And we all wear um, adult diapers here. Yeah, yeah. We all I, I know I was. Pamper- we're all night. pampered too in this in mm-hmm. this in this chat. Um, but I liked it. I was surprised that uh, like the voice acting was good, except for like cranky, and I guess Donkey Kong wasn't that great to me. Um, okay, but um. Yeah, I was surprised. Like I, 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 throughout the movie, I was like, "Oh yeah, that's Chris Pratt," but he did like a good job. He didn't sound like yeah. Chris Pratt. But- I can't wait to hear Miss Garfield. <laughs> oh Christ! Remember that's happening. I'm not watching that garbage. Garfield sucks, but um, um, I think it's good. I wish there was Yoshi, but I know we can't have everything. And if there's sequel. a sequel, he's gonna, if he's gonna be in the sequel, oh man, I'm excited. Sequel, for that. sequel. Um, but yeah, I think this this so is we're, we're- in, the, in the shelf for me. Maybe like lower okay. shelf, just because like objectively it's not great, but it's still I had a blast watching it. Yeah, I mean, as far as like again, quote unquote, kids movies go, this is like, I mean, again, it's it's like I was saying this in the car afterwards too. It's impossible for me not to view this movie as like a Mario fan. Like yeah. I, I've been I've been playing these games for like my whole life. It's hard to like divorce that and be like somebody who doesn't know what these things are. Like I just I, I have a hard time like thinking if, what if, that would even be like. That, you know. That, if that if it makes not helps, but like my boyfriend is like a very casual Mario player. Like he's only played a couple mm-hmm. of them. He didn't grow up playing with it, and he thought it was fine. He's like, it's better than I expected. He went in going with like abysmal expectation. <laughs> so, so he was like thinking yeah. it would be complete shit. So and he said it was fine. He thought it was like a six okay. or whatever, which is more than he thought. So like even for non Mario fans, I think maybe even if you have a if you're not like soy lenial soy tendo people like me, and but he's played. A Mario game. He's played a Mario game, but again, he's not like super in depth. Where like, yeah, I, it's just I like, would read Mario fanfics when I was nine. Like, he's well, no, that. but it, I didn't do that. Well, uh, you know, you didn't, and I, I still did. consider myself a big Mario. But like, I, I think it's for like anybody in our age range, roughly. It's like everybody is to some degree yeah. a Mario fan or is familiar. It's, I'm thinking about these like sixty year old critics who are like, "What is this?" I do, you know? I do think if you are not. If you are genuinely not a Mario fan, as in like you haven't played any of the games or 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 just like really aren't familiar with Mario, then I think you genuinely probably won't enjoy this movie because yeah. it, it but, but, but that feels like such a minority because Mario is so ubiquitous. Yeah. And generationally, right. too, like not just for people our age, but like Mario has endured so much and like Odyssey only came out like five years ago or six years ago and is still and is like one of the best Mario games ever made. Mm -hmm. And like, I would think a lot of younger people have probably played that. So I I think so. Yeah. And like, that's the thing is like, it's nice to see like something that it's like, it's not just something that panders to like adults who enjoy this property as a kids. It's like, it's like, there's like little kids who love Mario. There's people who are in their forties and fifties who love Mario. Uh, you know, everybody has their connection with it. And I think that it makes it like a truly unique property in that way. Like, you know, to some extent similar to Pokemon as well, you know, but even, actually to an even greater extent, I would argue. I know Pokemon is the biggest media franchise, but Mario's legacy is like, you know, far surpasses that of Pokemon. Yeah. But yeah, Nico, where where would you put it? Or did you have um, more to say? No, I think that was, I, I said what I wanted to say. Maybe like, bottom ish of the shelf just because like maybe if you're not a huge mario fan you're not going to get out of anything out of it but well wait this like, is for you it's for, for you me? though okay then like yeah. medium shelf then i medium. think it's like okay. a seven okay. out of ten i would say okay 
So and Josh, we're, uh, how do you? We're, give us your final thoughts. Yeah. Um. I know a lot of people rag on Illumination, and I don't really like their movies, but also how many of us have actually seen that many Illumination movies? Like, I've seen, I've seen Despicable like Me, and I haven't seen I've seen Despicable else. Me, I've seen Minions. Okay, you have seen Minions. Yeah, terrible. I, but, but like, another Minions came out, like, last year or something, and that was, like, somewhat decently reviewed. I heard people saying, like, you know, this is a decent kids movie. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I feel like Illumination maybe they're definitely one of they're maybe they're like a C tier like animation company. Like they're not making the best stuff, but I feel like people talk about like them like they're absolute trash, and I feel like they're competent well, at what I think they the do. Problem, like when you talk about animation, it's like I think people are talking about like the writing and stuff right. in the movies, but like as like an animation studio and their proficiency, they're pretty good. I mean, like like you said, Josh, this movie looks fucking amazing, you know? But even but even from a writing perspective, I know like like the movies that they make have their audience. And from what I can tell from reviews, like, yeah, they don't always appeal to adults, but they're not like the critic a lot of critics that I've seen don't consider them to be making like trash tier baby movies. Like they're making movies that work for their audience. So like the Sing movies, stuff like that, like yeah, that's like ugh. I don't know, like from what I understand, I haven't seen them, and f- like the clips I've that I've seen, like don't my, appeal to me. But I've watched a bit with like my relatives because I don't know why, but my like old ass relatives love those Sing movies. I'm like, this is shit. Like this is a lot of shit. like I. That's but a good point. A lot of, I feel like a lot like, of older people like like Minions and Illumination stuff. Like you know, like in their like fifties and sixties. Well, that's it's like, weird. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it it know. seems like they it seems kind of common. I don't but know. I, yeah, I, don't I guess know what I'm trying to say is I feel like they don't make insulting kids movies. <laughs> like, okay. I don't know. Maybe. But but also I haven't seen enough to really say, but Sure, sure. Um but anyway, as far as me, I like yeah, I really liked the movie. I went in with pretty abysmal expectations as well from like what I had heard. Like I was expecting it to be super babyish and just be like 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 my impression was like it's going to be all really stupid kids jokes with just references to try to appease adults. And I didn't feel like it was that. I felt like the references were not like all forced. They felt really like well implemented and Mm -hmm. uh, like the plot was fine. The characters were a little more like fleshed out than I was expecting them to be. And just overall, I don't know, like, I didn't feel like it was a baby kids movie. I felt like like it was a like there are bad kids movies and even the Sonic movies I think are bad kids movies because oh, like the type of humor in them is just really just like cringy. Yeah, speaking um, of music cues too, like that movie, like even as much as I enjoyed Sonic Two, I had I had to really look past some of the fucking like <laughs> uptown funk kind of thing. Yeah. And I hated I hated Sonic Two even more than Sonic One, but I know really? I differ I from you. Sonic yeah. Two was better personally. Yeah, I it felt like, like yeah, because I, I thought like Tails and Sonic together were cute, and they had like less of the shit with like the humans. Like I truly did not yeah. give a shit about this, that. Um, no, like, they didn't just, have like, less of the shit with the humans though. They had that entire fucking like half well, hour long wedding sequence in the listen, middle. We already like, talked about this movie. Whatever. More objectionable I, than anything in the first okay, movie. I don't care, but at least but we yeah, we're not talking about Sonic. Sonic and Tails <laughs> being cute together. Shut up. Okay, whatever. I was I was not there for this review, so whatever. So Josh, uh, any final thoughts before you uh, give us your ranking? Yeah, just that I liked it, and I would put it on like a lower shelf because I didn't think it was amazing, and it is a kids movie, but it was a good kids movie, and I would probably watch it again. And I'm excited for a dude. Season. I got to go in for the third time right now. I started dude, it over. I got to go to the. I think it's AMC that has the Mario like uh, bucket, like the like the question mark oh, point yeah, yeah. popcorn bucket. That's what I fucking need. I'm gonna be like, mom, let's go. <laughs> I think this is a perfect movie to see at Alamo. Like, there's a lot of movies I won't go see there, but there have been a lot of movies coming out like this. That is like, this is perfect for this experience because I'm not taking it super seriously. Like what I've seen, Ant Man, Scream Six. And Dungeons and Dragons movie there. Bro, in addition to Mario. a little, a little, a little off topic. But I saw Firewalk with me at the first time I've ever seen it. Fi- yeah, at, at Alamo. Wait, at dude, Alamo? I wouldn't. Yeah, like see last that month, Alamo. dude. Bad That's vibes. Weird, yeah. It was bad vibes. That movie that is, is weird. fucked up. That was a <laughs> the, fucked up movie. Yeah, it's a weird setting for that. But also, like, genuinely, like a movie that I'm trying to like get immersed in. The the atmosphere is a bit too distracting for me with like yeah. the servers walking around and stuff. 
Like, they do a well, good gl- job being subtle, but it's still... Well, I want to say I'm glad that we all put it in the library. Nobody hated it. I was worried we're going to have some, like, you know, some hurt dickhead. feelings, arguments. No, the Sonic movies I straight up burned, but no, these, like, this, this yeah. goes on the shelf. And most of all, I'm just glad it was fucking, like, entertaining. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. This is the best Illumination movie, I guess. I mean, I haven't seen most That's of them, but true. I agree. Yes, it's probably true. Anyway, guys, uh, again, thank you to Shruggernaut for donating the money for our whole group to go see this movie. And we had, um, like, again, one of the best movie-going experiences of my life. Had such a blast with all you guys and seeing the movie Aww. and eating pizza and drinking beer. Um, yeah, I guess that, that wraps up this episode. Uh, thank you guys for coming on the show. Thank you for seeing the movie with me. Yeah. And thanks, everybody, for listening and donating. Uh, I'll see you on this side for whatever we pick next. Bye. Bye-bye. Josh, you want to give a sign-off? Get out of here. Wait, wait. Very my bro- sign-off? My sign-off? My sign-off? <gasps> Sequel. <laughs> <laughs>